Greetings and welcome viewers. I am your host and storyteller Silvanov. Thank you for joining us while we delve into the world of darkness with Vampire the Masquerade. The stream is intended for a mature audience and does contain mature themes that may not be suitable for all viewers. This game revolves around a dark horror theme and contains content that may be an emotional trigger for some audience members. Please keep in mind that this is a work of fiction. The views and actions of the characters are not explicitly the views or actions of the actual players. At no time should any of the violence or horror portrayed in our game be attempted by anyone at any time for any reason. Please sit back, grab a drink and a snack, and join us on the shadowy path that is the world of darkness. And now before we start, please meet and welcome our players for the evening. Good evening. I am Raven, and I play Annabelle, the Nosferatu. Good evening. I'm Canada Sampson, and I am playing Virginia Stone, the Torridor. Good evening, folks. I am back. Sorry, I needed a little break, but I am Bethem Trickster, and I'm playing Sam Smith. I am Mitt Watt, and I'm currently playing Mr. Ezekiel White. Performed man. I'm Sale Irish on Twitch, and I'm playing Tim Toon, the Bruja. I am Brand the Wolf on Twitter, at Brand the Wolf. Follow me there. And I am playing Major Delaney, the Ventru. Hey, I'm Chase, and I'm going to be trying to speak with Fangs, and also I'm playing uh, Tim Blood. And once again, I am Sylvanov, a.k.a. The Dark Druid, your host and storyteller for the evening. So last week, we are still in the same evening at the boardroom at the St. Clair Estate, where our coterie has been gathered by the now introduced Major Delaney, who has made his presence known and has affected the members at the table greatly. We're going to cut to a different scene. Sam Smith, the evening before, having already had it out with the Torridor Primogen, Fiona, fed up, sent on a task by Virginia, which ended in a spectacular failure. That being the death of Lorenzo one of Virginia Stone's schools, retainers, personal assistant, amongst other f features that he uh, filled for her, as it were. Sam Smith went to investigate where Lorenzo had gone to find her other ghoul, Freddy, who had been missing for several evenings. When Sam got to the location he found Lorenzo dead. Freddy's apartment ransacked. Trying to get the body out, ran into one of Freddy's neighbors, who seeing the body lumped over Sam's chest or over his shoulder, quickly got on the phone with 911, taking picture after picture after picture as he was hurried to exit. Immediately, he went to dispose of the body, going to a nearby grave site or graveyard, finding a freshly exhumed or dug grave and depositing Lorenzo. He returned to his home to sleep it off. Awake the next evening, Sam Smith, we rejoin you, sir, at your home. Yeah, so I'm not getting up right away. I'm just laying there because of the fact that it was somewhat my fault that Lorenzo died because I sent him to go find Freddy. Under my order, and I 
and right now I feel kind of bad. And now I know Virginia is not going to talk right now because I don't know if she's still in her meeting with Fiona. So I know she's not going to answer her phone. So I'm just checking my emails and then I'm going to go watch TV. So you pretty much slough off for the evening. Assured that yeah. the Haven Club is in good hands since Virginia was there, at least last you knew. Last I knew, I mean, I last I knew she was there. I haven't heard from her. I haven't heard from her. She hasn't called me and contacted me. Doubt she wants to talk to me right now. So I'm just gonna mind my business and watch TV. If she needs me, she knows how to get a hold of me. Several and hours go by. Sam mundanely engaged in kind-like activities, vegging to the TV, enjoying the solace and solitude of his home. Around two in the morning, Sam probably winding down. It's been pretty boring. There's an abrupt and loud I don't want to open the door right away and I say, who is it? Mr. Sam Smith? Who maybe who am I speaking with? Your presence has been requested. By whom? By one Mr. Major Delaney. Hmm. Okay, where am I being requested to go? Mr. Smith, we suggest you open the door and come with us. Um, thing is, I'm not dressed. I doubt you guys want me to come out in my pajamas. Please let me get a chance to get dressed. Please. You have two minutes. Won't even take me long. So I go in and I put on my old black suit, toward a pin on it. And I head out the door. See? Two minutes. They didn't take me long. When you open the door, there are six suited, armed individuals, three on either side of your doorstep. There's a suburban, black, tinted windows sitting in front of your home. The door open. There's nothing said. One of the suited individuals motions you to the vehicle. And that's where and that's where I start walking to. I start walking to the vehicle, not saying a word, just so I walk. You get in. Four of them get in with you. The other two climb into the front seat and begin driving away. It's a familiar path that they drive you. You've been there before. Slowly up the 234 bypass, just past the airport, they swing a right into the woods in the direction of the St. Clair Estate. The mansion. I think you've been there before. Before it was cut off from the coterie shortly before Mr. Victor Costa's unknown absence and disappearance. You arrive, they drive directly to the front door. Again, the motions are reversed. As the two in the front get out, the four seated with you get out and motion you to the front door. So I slide out casually and I start walking towards the front door. You ascend the few steps past the marbled columns. As you get near the front door, it opens. It's a familiar face of Alfred, the estate's butler and attendant. Mr. Ah, Smith. Alfred. Ah, Alfred, it's been too long, my friend. How are you? 
I am well, and I trust you were not assailed. No, 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 no. I I am curious to why I was summoned to the estate. I said I was sure we didn't have access to the estate anymore. And yes. Major Delaney has open access to it, I believe. Miss the major is currently in a meeting. If you'll please follow me to the atrium where you may wait until called upon. Of course, of course. Kitchen was always a good place to just relax. Alfred goes in and turns left towards the atrium, <clears throat> motions for you to make yourself at home. Mm. Strangely, the six suited armed guards also take up positions in the atrium, not interfering with you in any way, though they are definitely watching. They watch mm. your every move, your every gaze, your every lingering look at the artwork and statuary that is on display. Alfred excuses himself and disappears further into the estate. Mm. Returning back to the boardroom. Again, the headset on the desk, the LED next to it alights. Will activate it. M Major. Alfred. Yes, your final guest is has been chauffeured and is present. Mr. Smith has arrived. Yes, he's in the atrium awaiting your summons. Oh, let us wait for Mr. Keats to get back up here and sorted. And then we shall welcome Mr. Smith back into the fold. As you wish, sir. Thank you, Alfred. It is my pleasure. And he hangs up. I thought Mr. Keats was already returned to the boardroom. Uh, the last thing we said was that uh, to You're him muted, to sir. come back up. Sorry, yeah. The last thing was uh, the intercom like interaction being like... He was the... in route. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Jonathan... You are escorted from the bowels of the estate, from the sights that you were forced to endure. A pair of guards, again, escorting you back through the hallways and through the atrium, where you notice a larger presence of armed guards and we'll pause because Sam Smith walked away. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think during that time, like the the camera would follow Jonathan, and like um, none of his like liveliness or like normal like quips of humor or insight would be there, and he just um, more more deadpan. Yeah, morose, just just really fucking depressed. Um, like the life's been sucked out of you. Yeah, like that. And, uh, and during I, this this little intermediary time, while we uh, we wait, I was going to say Annabelle is going to get up and go over and lean in real close to Mister White, so that only he can hear what she's about to say into his ear. And she's just going to say, "Mister White, it is time you respect the traditions. Do you understand me? Yes or no? If you say no, this is it for you. It'll take three, maybe two and a half seconds to respond to her. An, an, an nearly inaudible, yes. Good, Mr. White. I'm pleased that you have come to your senses in this regard i see the light now miss annabelle <laughs> ray it's the only light you see your teaching has finally worked <laughs> praise you have... me. sorry go ahead praise be the wisdom of you and the major you have much to learn, Mr. White. Yes, I do. I make a roll to hear this. 
Because well, she said she right was the whispering. They're not. Are you guys whispering? Okay. I'm. I'm just like uh, close up against his ear, kind of just like trying to talk softly into his ear. If other people here, I don't really care. But it's just that this is like a comments for Mr. White sort of thing. So, sure, He's you speaking can roll with an awareness if you're trying to listen in. I mean, the room. The yep. room does have sound dampening. But that's for exterior, not interior. Oh boy. Ooh, that's a bestial. I'm going to roll to avoid that bestial. Spend a willpower. Mm. Uh, that? No, no, I won't. No, I won't. So that's uh, uh, one, two, three, four, or correction. Oh my God, it's been so long. Uh, well, it's one, two, three, four, four successes. With a best two, critical. two or more, and you. Or, I'm sorry, not a best critical. A messy critical. It's a messy critical. Two or more, and and you can definitely pick up on the whispering since no one else at the table is talking. It's very pensive in the room, given what has already transpired. Mr. White, this is your last chance. And I will be a swift executioner if you decide to fuck Make up again. Wind. Hmm. He will look back at her when she makes the comment of executioner. I would expect no less from you, Miss Annabelle. Given who our Lord is, or your Lord, as it were. Mm -hmm. I don't understand your reference, Mr. White, because I do not subscribe to your brand of insanity. Whatever you... gets you through these nights. Lord, oh, no, what, uh, no, whoa, whoa, no, oh, not whatever gets him through these nights. Mm. Whatever has gotten him through these nights up until this point has been abject failure and masquerade breaches and slaughter. Let's 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 steer away from those particular activities, uh, Mr. White. A simple yes, is... no. you understand, and you will follow her lead. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Now, now that she knows that others are listening, Annabella will stand upright and she will kind of put her hand on Mr. White's shoulder. It's like, <laughs> don't worry, Major Delaney. He understands. He will comply. Brilliant. Miss Stone, do you have anything I need to be made aware of before Mr. Smith arrives? There are still blood tears on her face from watching the display in the cells. I but she kind of uh, jolts. The very, sorry, I take the very nice silk uh, pocket square out and hand it to her. She looks at it and doesn't acknowledge it otherwise. And she continues. Um, I do have some words for Mr. Smith, courtesy of our primogen Fiona, as well as some of my own. I do believe uh, if her information is as reliable as it always is, I do believe he might be delivering me the news that he uh, killed another one of my ghouls. I take responsibility for the first. That was my own stupidity. <laughs> this, this is something else. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure the details yet, and I'm very interested to hear them. But it was a case of uh, ghoul was not his to command, and yet he did. And now I have word that that ghoul is dead. Hmm. Lovely. And Miss Stone, I do highly encourage you, you to sort yourself out. It is unbecoming to have such visible displays of emotion on a rose. You draw blood from others. Blood is not drawn from you with Mia. Tears are not always a sign of weakness, Major Delaney. <sighs> Is 
in the face. It is mere compassion the, for others who share these nights with us. In the face of what's coming, madam, everything is a weakness. Now please comport yourself in a manner that Fiona would find appropriate. Sam, as you linger in the atrium, a pair, another pair of armed suited individuals escort Jonathan Keats from somewhere else in the estate into the atrium and continue walking in the direction of the boardroom. You're muted, sir. No, I had a call. If I didn't say nothing. So I see Mr. Keats with two armed individuals. Does he look well enough for me to, to at least greet him or no? Um, I'm shackled. I have blood tears and um, all my clothes are pretty much fucked. And my hands are, um, there's like bones sticking out of them. Mm. His hands are it a bloody pulpy just... mess. Yeah, so I'm just going to just nod to Mr. Keats at this point. Because I don't think he looks well enough for me to actually say hello to him and just watch him walk by. Uh, my gaze is down and I'm just walking. I don't meet anyone's gaze. So they march on through Jonathan with his head hang hanging low. The near prison like shuffle of having ankle irons uh, limiting one step. Again, the door opens in the boardroom, and Mr. Keats is ushered inside. The guards staying outside and closing the door behind him. Mr. Keats looks the worst for wear to all who can see him. His hands bloodied and pulped, bones showing some fingers bent at odd angles, clothing a ripped, smeared with the viscera of gore. Please have a seat with Mr. Toon, Mr. Keats. And we will continue with the night's affairs. I'll sit down. Mr. Toon, and I'll pull a key out of my pocket and I'll hand it to him. Major. Please release him from his shackles. Very well. I'll take the key and release him. Uh, as I'm releasing him, I'm going to kind of whisper in his ear, nothing personal, and unlock him. And over his him releases you from the ankle irons and the shackles about your wrists. Do you collect them up or do you just let them clack to the floor? Uh yeah, I'm just gonna let him clack to the floor. I'm gonna like kick him under his chair. Okay. Jonathan, there's oh. only a monicum of relief knowing you're no longer restrained. The closeness to Tim is probably a little disturbing considering what he had just done to you. And the requisite actions following. Not sure if Jonathan would place blame at Tim for these things. Or what would be going through his mind. But the atmosphere yeah. is definitely tense. More so point at the Delaney. But uh, yeah, there, there'd be something at the back of his head remembering what Tim Toon done. Activate the intercom on the desk and say to Alfred, Alfred, do you... Dear boy, would you please have uh, 
forgive me, Alfred, sir, would you please have Mr. Smith brought in? At once, Major. The line goes quiet. Sam, in unison, the six people hanging in the atrium gather closer to you, urging you further down the hallway in the direction of the boardroom. No one touches you or nudges you, but the intent is clear. Yeah, the intent is clear. I'm not to go anywhere. And if I'm needed at the estate and I'm supposed to meet someone at the estate, the quorum dictates that I meet this person and do not try to duck out of said meeting. So I'm heading to the boardroom, staying as quiet as possible. They follow you closely. Getting to the boardroom, you can see that the <coughs> photochromatic glass is opaqued over as the door is closed. One of the armed guards opens it, uh, causing the effect to become translucent once more. Uh, as you peer in the room, you see Annabelle sitting close to Mr. White, Tim sitting close to Mr. Keats, Virginia sits with a seat open next to her, and a stranger sitting at the head of the boardroom table. So I greet everybody one by one. Miss Annabelle. Mr. Smith. Mr. White. Mr. Toon. Mr. Mr. Smith. Mr. Keats, I nod to him again. Seeing he's not in the mood to talk to anybody, I just nod my head to him after I said his name. Uh, my eyes will briefly meet yours and just look back down. Miss Stone, I just nod to her, and then Hi. I look and I look to the stranger and I say, "Good evening, sir." Evening. My name is Major Delaney. You may address me as Major or Major Delaney. Please have a seat next to Miss Stone. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Well, then by all means, have a seat anywhere else at the table. I sit anywhere else at the table, and I look to Major Delaney. So I heard that I was summoned to come here tonight. I'm <laughs> sure you have a good reason. I'm not going to ask why, because I figure that you would tell me, and I'm not going to be that kind of person and be nosy. Without a good reason. I hold up a folder, and I toss it in front of him. Mm -hmm. As it lands, pictures scatter out of it, of him with a body slung over his shoulders. Mm -hmm. I look at the folder. Oh. Uh, it's because I went to go and investigate one of Miss Stone's ghouls no, who went to go because someone saw me with the body. Got it in two. Well, Virginia, there's a reason the, why I was carrying that body. The picture seemed to be almost stop motion fashion as if someone had taken several pictures in a row of Sam coming out of Freddy's apartment with a body slung over his shoulder. And as the pictures progress and he turns to leave, you can see it's the face of Lorenzo, dead, gray, slumped over his back as he leaves. Major Delaney? Lorenzo offered to go check on Freddy. I went to go check on Lorenzo. I find him dead in Freddy's apartment and his apartment ransacked, completely tossed. Everything and everything was on the floor. If they was looking for something, they found it and they left. And left Lorenzo's body as proof and a warning that no one else should be looking for him. How does this excuse your blatant violation? It doesn't. 
And it was a, that was a re- I'm explaining why I was at that location I, while I was carrying his body. I don't care why you were there. I don't care what reason you had to be there. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is you allowed your picture to be taken, Mr. Smith. To be honest, I didn't even know she was taking a photo of me at, the, at that really? moment. Because according to this one right here, it looks like you were looking right at the camera. Mm-hmm. I heard a scream. I looked in that direction. I heard somebody scream. I'm going to see who screamed. Did not see her was taking a photo. And I was like, I know. I had to walk over and convince her to end the call and had her go lay down. Because my main concern was getting Lorenzo's body out of there before someone else decided to show up and take his body. Uh, X to doubt. Mm -hmm. I want to see if he's telling the truth. Insight. Uh, Yes, please. What's an insight? Okay. It's a fairly good role for you, sir. Yeah. I don't. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Golly, G. Willikers. Okay. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine successes. Sam, you are indeed telling the truth, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, there is no sense of deception in him. So what you're saying, Mr. Smith, is that in these modern nights when every kind and their cat has a cell phone, you heard a scream, turned around, saw a mortal, and did nothing? I convinced her to end the call. I asked her to hang up. Oh, so you did see that she had a phone? She had a phone. I didn't see her take pictures, Major. I didn't see her take pictures, but she was uh, she was on the phone with someone. I asked her to end the call. And she went through the woozy, and I had to go lay down. Did you take the phone? I had to take the phone because I don't know where she put it. Because she dropped it somewhere. I don't know where she dropped it at. Plus, I was in a hurry because I heard sirens, Major. And do you think us Kendra should be sticking around with sirens or heard? I think you should not be in a situation where sirens are occurring in the first place, Mr. Smith. Well, I was told by Miss Stone to go to go find Lorenzo. Now, I said go fix the problem you caused. And I went to go fix that problem, and the problem is now, I don't know how to put it. Without making you even more mad at me, you already am, because apparently I think I'm on thin ice with you. And you know what? I'm glad I'm sitting on this side of the table, not next to you, where you can choke me out or stake me. As Tim looks to his right at Sam Smith. So, moving on. And I'm going to pick up the remote and activate the video from the Haven about the tete and play the video from the tete between Mr. Smith and, and Miss Griffin, Fiona Griffin. On the screen in the boardroom is indeed footage from the speakeasy. The camera near the door entry pointing towards the bar where there seems to be an interchange between Sam Smith and Fiona. Barely a few words are uttered between the two. Even though there's no audio, the body language is quite clear. As Fiona stands from her position at the bar, a look on her face as she's now facing the camera of agitation potentially anger 
and words can almost be read barking out of her mouth. Sam Smith, seen from a skew to the side a bit in the back, seems to straighten, seems to puff out his chest a bit, and his body language speaks to him responding to her, though you can't see his mouth and can't tell what he's saying. You can see her become more enraged as the conversation continues for but a few moments when Fiona's face can be clearly seen to become nearly scarlet before she turns, barking a few other words and exits. The video ends and is cut in by another piece of footage. There's blue and red lights rebounding off of tombstones. There's floodlights surrounding a particular grave. A small backhoe opening the hole where a body not in a coffin is slowly pulled from the dirt quickly placed into a bag and on a gurney into and off the screen as several Police officers start looking into the opened grave site, and the video ends. What was missing from that video was the fact that Miss Griffin decided to stake me after that little teddy tech we had over the fact that I'm so, that I'm basically Miss Stone's lap dog. If she, if she says jump, I say how high. I'm not nobody's lap dog. I'm an equal, and apparently she didn't like the fact that I stood up to her about that, and she staked me afterwards. I'm sorry. Mr. Said, Smith? Uh, one second, Miss Stone. You said you are an equal, an equal to whom? Miss Stone, we run the same nightclub. If <laughs> that Mr. Major, that you have received. Excuse me, sir. I do not recall saying that we were equals in this matter. I am a part owner of the club. You are my house manager. And as of this point, I didn't know about this shit when I sat down with Fiona. And she told she me to tell you you're on thin ice. No, no. Listen for a second for once. You fucked up. She told me to tell you you're on thin ice. I'm telling you now, you're going on a leave of absence indefinitely until you can get your shit together because I don't want this anywhere near the club. I'm not firing you yet, but if you keep this shit up, you will be fired. I cannot have this around the club. Am I allowed to speak now? By all means. Thank you, Major Delaney. So, you say I'm going to leave an absent. It sounds like you're firing me. You know, you say you're not. No. It's, in, it's hinted. You say for me to listen. Now it's your turn to listen. It sounds like you are firing me. If that's the case, then come right out and say it. And I will turn in anything that belongs if to you. I, I will turn that I in. I firing you? I'm not done. If I said I was firing you, I, I am not done. I, I am Smith. not done. You keep you cutting me off, and I do not appreciate that. So I am not done. I let you talk. It is my time. I will get my time to talk. That's the what it major, sounds like. The major <laughs> leans back, crosses his legs, picks up his drink, and just smiles. I will get my point across, and I will be heard. What Stone. point? Get to it. Let me finish. Let me get to the point. Tim is going to grab a steak and start cleaning his fingernails. The body language now, that Major Sam, Delaney, 
the body language that Sam all. Smith is displaying is not unlike what could be discerned from the video. Mm-hmm. Now, Major Delaney, from the rest of that video over the tete a with Miss Fiona, what was not added was the fact that she did stake me after that, and then she left me in Miss Stone's office and walked away. And Miss Stone was the one who roughly removed said steak from me, ruined one of my best shirts. And you will get the bill to get that fixed, by the way. <laughs> and there's no if ands or buts about it. You will get that. You will get that bill. I'm not Mr. fixing that shirt. Smith, do you think you have the authority to backtalk a primogen? Your I, elder speaks and you listen. Why is no one letting me talk? I'm being interrupted. I'm and that is being you, Mr. Rude. Smith. And but you, you have spit in the face of one of this domains higher ups as it were well this higher up is not, not like very me. wise well this higher up is not like me i know this for a fact he doesn't have to like you you have to like her mr smith i'll tolerate her the mm-hmm. tolerance is fine but you don't get to back talk those who keep your unlife going i have a message for you from fiona griffin she says next time you are going to be an art installation in her office Oh, lovely. Basically, next time I back talk her, I'm dead. That's fine. Okay. You're not lovely. supposed to back talk the primogen. I'm not supposed to treat you like dirt either. Not Mr. Fine. Smith. Silence, if you please. Of course, Major. Don't mean to be so mean towards you. But I, I said did silence. And I will have it. Or I will enforce it, Mr. Smith. Of course, Major, whatever you say. What is the sixth tradition, Mr. Smith? Do not break the masquerade for no. any reason. That's the first tradition. The sixth one is destruction. No, no, Mr. Keats, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see you wear a lovely rose pin. May I see it, please? I slowly take off the pen, and I gently place it in his hand. I look at the pin. Miss Stone, for you. I take it, and I set it on the table in front of me. Mr. Smith, not only have you violated the masquerade, not only have you failed so miserably in the duties assigned to you, but you disrespected your primogen and your elder. And then you compound that disrespect by your lack of contrition here. You say you are owed. You are owed. You are owed nothing. your penance, your choices before you are. You have cost Miss Stone two of her retainers. Just one. The other one was my doing. Sorry. I stand corrected. (laughs) You have cost Miss Stone one of her retainers. In order for you to learn respect, you shall replace that retainer with yourself. She will open a vein, and you will drink of it. And you will do this three consecutive times, at least. You will bend the knee 
to your primogen as is her right and your duty. And finally, never again will you mention anything about status. Yes, sir, whatever you say. Adam Smith definitively wears the concern, the evidence of imminent action sits heavily on him. It is clear he is hearing the words being said to him. We're going to take a five-minute break, and we'll be right back. Please stick around. Thank you for bearing with us. We are back. Uh, The scene is coming to an end soon, so we will move right along. And as we were, the major raising his voice, gaining the attention of the room, commanding its absolute authority, laying it down for yet another member of the coterie, ensuring that no one's been left out of this beating. My fellows of this beleaguered night, the dreaded day star rises and I find the blood slowing as I'm sure all of you do. Rooms have been prepared. You shall be escorted unless you know the way. I bid you all adieu, and we shall see you on the eve. Major, if I may. Miss Stone. Do you think that we could possibly arrange for a ride for my basement dweller? I do not feel comfortable leaving him in my haven, seeing as they have been so frequently compromised. I would hate to lose this one. Sergeant Spears, will you see to that? Absolutely, Major. Right away. Brilliant. Martin turns on a heel, exits the boardroom Uh, swiftly. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Where we had the other one. Absolutely, sir. Thank Um, you, Martin. I will step up to Major Delaney and whisper something into his ear. Can I, can I see her? Can I be with her for at least tonight? I have information to, very pertinent for you. Mr. Keats. If you wish to share a with her for tonight, that can be arranged. That's what I wish. I swear to you that so long as we all work together to serve the tower, no harm shall befall her or you. Be it in my power. Then you have my undying loyalty. But if you've Jeopardize this. I don't think I have to elaborate. Mr. Keats, I'm not in the habit of jeopardizing much. So, if you will, I have a man out there named Mr. Winters. He will show you the way. Thank you. Before Jonathan leaves, Virginia is going to grab his arm for a moment. Not not harshly, just gently. Yeah, you can see the tears already welling in his eyes. And I'm going to dig into my pocket 
and provide an embroidered handkerchief to him. Yes. And I'm just going to hold his gaze for a moment and walk away. It's much too dear a gift. So I look to the major and Miss Stone. I say, by your leave, major. Have a drink first, Mr. Smith, and then may mm-hmm. attend your regnant. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So I walk over to Miss Stone and I prepare myself to drink from her. With much trepidation. Major, do you have a, a glass candy? <laughs> I'm afraid that's not how it works, Miss Stone. For for Kindred, it must be straight from the tap, as it were. Zeke just gives a look between Virginia and Annabelle of, yes, that's exactly how this works. <laughs> well, then I will tap open a vein, I guess, and present my wrist to Mr. Smith. He doesn't say a word, and he drinks from her vein. Now, Virginia, do you enact the bond? (laughs) I think I was asked to, so I will. I'm just... I'm whether you were asked to or not, I'm asking you, do you enact the bond? I will. Okay. Sam, as you drink from Virginia, <clears throat> the mutual feelings that you've had before for Virginia are enhanced. They're strengthened. They're not overwhelming. And you've bonded others before ghouls, useful tools, though you've never submitted to it before, you're pretty sure that that feeling that those mortals have felt for you before is exactly what's going on. As you drink, you'll remove one hunger and the bond begins to take root. Well, I was at 100 anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, you're not going to go down to zero without taking a mortal's life. So, so as soon as I finish drinking from a stone, I have it to the major and I say, by your leave, sir. We can't hear you. That is for your regnant to decide, Miss Stone. Stone, by your leave. I will nod. Mm. And I turn to everybody and I say, good night. And I just walk out the door. Not waiting for a response from anybody else. As you exit, and all of you will notice, uh, as the glass becomes transparent again, the crowd of security personnel has been reduced to two. And instead, there are a number of house servants um, awaiting each of you as you exit the boardroom. A person immediately introduces themselves to you, Sam, and says, a room has been prepared for you, Mr. Smith, right this way, if you please. I just nod and have them lead the way. And they lead you back down the halls, up the stairs to the residential floor and to one of the stately rooms that has been prepared, uh, strangely enough, in a decor that is to your liking. It would probably occur to you that they've gathered that information from your own home and have decorated it in a way that would be appeasing or even pleasing to yourself. They excuse themselves after showing you to your room and disappear. You'll notice that on the nightstand, 
next to the bed is a single handset, not really a telephone base as it were, but it's it's in, inserted into the actual table and there's a single LED light next to it um, that is currently off. If you've stayed at the estate before, you would know that by picking this up, you will get the attention of the house's servants. So I look at it, look at my room. And, and it is and stately. Just, it is five it stars. Is, and I just go to bed. The tug of the sunrise uh, can be felt by all. Who's next? Okay. Jonathan, as you exit, the remaining two armed security personnel usher you back the way you came, down into the guts of the estate, down the elevator towards the cells. When you get there, you notice that the cell that she was in is immaculately clean. She's freshly dressed. There is now a small bed in the cell. It's sparse. It's very Spartan. There's nothing there that could possibly be used as a weapon other than the walls themselves, as you have found out yourself. They open the cell, usher you in, and close it behind you. I will, uh, there is a uh, weeping to... Ada. Yeah. Kind of huddled in the corner. I will go to um to embrace her. Not stroke her hair. When you first touch her, she convulses almost recoiling, throwing hands up without retreating no. from the corner as a almost a reflexive protection. It's it's just me. It's just me. This this place I know. This place is wrong. Yeah. Look, Why am I, I here, Jonathan? Because we we fucked I fucked up. I did what you asked. I know, I know. That's all Look, I've done. I, Why are we here? You know how they are, they they'll take any they'll take anything. They've taken you. They haven't taken They've me taken from you. me. Look, I'm, I'm I'm working on getting you out. They can they can have me, but she turns to look at you. The blood tears are streaming. Her third eye black as onyx. Oh, I'm gonna make a a hunger check. I'm at hunger four. Yeah. Um I got a I got a four. Four successes. The hunger's there for <sighs> sure. The relationship between the two of you makes this the sweetest drink you could possibly think to ever have. And even in the silenced voice. In the back of your head, there's a grinning, yeah. toothy smile. The sensation of licking your own lips, even though you didn't. She sees you 
looks at you in the face, presses a hand to your chest and pushes you back. I'm not going to do anything. I, I can help you, Jonathan. No, no, not, not like that. You don't get off so easy. How are you going? This place, it's this place. These people. That. Yeah. The scene fades back to the boardroom. Virginia, Zeke, the Major, Annabelle, and Tim watching as the other two are led away. At that, I think I'm going to retire. <laughs> A prudent course of action, Miss Stone. Virginia, as you get up and exit the table, making it to the door, again, you are greeted with one of the servants. Miss Stone, it's a pleasure to have you again at the estate. Your room has been prepared for you. I believe you know where it says. I do. Then if you need anything, please let us know. Of course. Your hospitality is, as always, appreciated. It's... As always, our pleasure, Miss Stone. Have a good rest. Thank you. Your usual in the morning? Yes, that would be delightful. We will arrange it. And this can be heard from, from the door. Mr. Toon, I suggest you take this opportunity to find a place of rest. I have words I must speak with the Major. Fair enough. Major, Miss Annabelle, good morning. And Tim is going to leave. Tim, you are likewise met at, the, met at the door, one of the house servants. Mr. Toon, a pleasure to have you. Return to the estate, sir. Your room has likewise been repaired, prepared. I'm sure you remember where it is. I do indeed. Thank you. If you require anything, please let us know. I will happily ring you. Have a good rest, sir. You as well. Leaving the Major, Annabelle, and Zeke. May no, Mr. White, you will stay where I can see you. Yes, Miss Annabelle. Major, we need to find the harpy. He would be our best lead for the Sabbat problem. Or perhaps do you have him in a cage somewhere already? You are so quick. Slow as smooth, smooth as fast. No, I do not know where the harpy is. Why is finding the harpy critical to dealing with the Sabbat, Miss Annabelle? Because the harpy was in the presence of a Sabbat elder who failed to survive an interrogation I was putting him through. The harpy has so far evaded my grasp. I shall make the pertinent inquiries <clears throat> on the eve. Is there anything else? 
I do not believe so, Major. Thank you for your generosity tonight and your hospitality in this that is not your domain. But I know you speak well here, so... I speak well several places, Miss Annabelle. Of course you do. You are so capable, Major. Hmm. There's always somebody more capable, Miss Annabelle. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Come now, Mr. White. Arise at her summons. And Annabelle is going to start walking out the door. You are both greeted by a pair of servants. Mr. White. Your return was unexpected, but welcome nonetheless. Yes. Your room has been prepared, sir, and is awaiting you. The other servant looks at Annabelle. Miss Annabelle, we've prepared a room for you. However, we're not sure of how you would like it, so we've simply prepared a room for you. <laughs> That's okay. Mr. White will be sleeping with me tonight. So show us to my room, please. As you wish, ma'am. Right this way. I show you to the second floor, to the residential suites, to yet another stately palatial room. Um, exquisitely prepared, luxurious, um, certainly not what Annabelle's accustomed to. Um, and you are again given the same speech of there's a phone on the nightstand by, by the bed. If you need anything, please simply pick it up and we will do as we can to meet your needs. Of course. When they leave, Annabelle is going to find the closet. And if it has like a shelf or something up in it, it's she's going to climb up. Hmm? Like a huge walk-in closet. Perfect. If there is shelving in it, she's going to climb up on top of the shelving and kind of like lay down. Sure. Mr. White, she's going to call out. Do find some place safe to sleep. Do not trust the people in these walls. He will give her a look of acknowledgement. He understands that order completely. Hmm. Shall I go underneath you or under the bed? Sleep where you wish, Mr. White. I was just saying, be... Mindful of your surroundings. You will not once bow and hide under the bed for sleep. Mm -hmm. In the boardroom. I am policing up all of the dossiers, the photos, organizing it back into the folders. I place the folders back in the satchel and I retreat back to the library is Martin in there no you've sent him to go do some things and he's off doing ah, yes, yes 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 I look around the library. And I look back at the sculpture on the wall. She'll take more than this to shake the pillars of the tower. But they came very, very, very close. Steady, man, steady. Your work is just beginning.
And with that, I shall adjourn to my own quarters and slake my hunger as the sun rises. Excellent. And with that, we're going to take our first official break. We'll be back in five to seven minutes to continue with the second half of this evening's session. Thank you all for joining us, and we hope you stick around. We will return momentarily. And welcome back, viewers. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and sticking around as we engage in the second half of our session for the evening. Uh, we return to the St. Clair Estate. At some point during the day, a very attentive team of security entered the cell where Jonathan and his beloved Ada who slept well. Not so much for Jonathan as the hunger begins to become a madness. The voice that is normally quiet to our duskborn friend speaks loudly as the air pressure changes in the cell and several heavily armored individuals enter all with riot shields they rush Jonathan pressing him to a corner separating him from the sleeping Ada What do you do, Jonathan, when this team of six individuals rushes into the cell? I will attempt to eat or rip to shreds every single one of them. At Hunger 5, that compulsion is overwhelming. Strength and brawl, please. Rolling the API slow. Um, oh, fuck. I BCO crit. So four successes. Four successes. A moment. As the six rush in, surrounding the Duskborn, surprised at his alertness in the middle of the day he lunges jumping airily clamoring on top of one and begins bashing him in the head on his helmet the synthetic armor soaking a flurry of blows as the team, the other five draw weapons and fire on him. Though there's no sound of gunfire, there's the unmistakable pop and hiss of air compressed tools launching multiple taser darts, hitting Jonathan Keats squarely as he has centered his attention on one poor individual. These are not your normal tasers. These are not police issue, nor military. The voltage and pure electrical lightning that surges Jonathan immediately burns his flesh, causing convulsions as he continues to beat one individual about the head, neck, and shoulders, attempting to pierce the body armor, attempting to get at the flesh, the pumping blood underneath as he begins to lose control, collapsing to the floor of the cell as two more security personnel 
rush in, dragging Ada out. Jonathan helpless to intercede. The current ceaselessly assailing his muscles, his nervous system. One can only think what's going on through this kindred's mind. The assault was so violent, so quick. He was so assured of such an easy meal. And out of the corner of his eye, again, Grace, lovely Grace, violently whisked from the cell. Jonathan, willpower check, please. Uh, no successes. Wow. So, yeah, the frenzy intensifies in your head. The voltage continues to flow through you. Some four superficial damage will be done as the continued arc burns flesh. As the team begins to back out of the cell, still pumping you full of electricity. Uh, I'm almost a torpor. <laughs> Ouch. They quickly back out, tossing in five pints of freshly gathered Vitae from something or something else before cutting off the flow of electricity, closing the cell door, cutting off the connection to their tasers. Control of your muscles returns rapidly. The room emptied of but you, a hard bed, and a slack of bags tossed into the room. The frenzy is real. What do you do? Kind of very best seal and guttural like just <laughs> just like rip open the bags and just start greedily drinking them in, and in trying the, to heal the, the wounds that I have in the efforts I would imagine that you are only able to recover three of your hunger as the rest is just strewn about in your frenzied activity ripping them open and again, one of those hungers returning as you will your body to heal two of the superficial damage that you've received over the last two evenings. The hole in your chest finally knitting closed, but your torso, shirt ruined, littered with nearly 10 points of burn with needles and wires still attached to your flesh. The memory of the incident as raw as the burns on you. Yep. And they leave you to it. I would imagine it's some time before Jonathan recovers his senses, reeling in that bestial nature. His beast, the voice of Ada, crying for vengeance. The mental image 
of all of her eyes, all three, burning with the fountain of blood released from them in her tears in your mind as they drag her off for what can only be another session. We'll have our revenge. One can only know what goes on when you're in this box left to stew in your own thoughts, freshly recovered from the frenzy. The room stinks of vitae and plastic and burnt flesh. The constant reminder of taser probes hanging from your chest. The rest of the house, a peaceful day's sleep has gone by, though left to your own thoughts, your own dreams. The sun dips below the horizon, tugs at your consciousness, pulling from, from the torpor of sleep. As you each rise, Virginia, as your eyes open, there is a young, sprightly Italian young man gazing at himself in your body length mirrors in your room, looking over his shoulder at you with a smile. Good evening. Hello. I was told that you wanted some company. <laughs> ah, I see. He lively <laughs> slides over to the side of the bed, stripping from his shirt as he goes, conveniently looks as though he's had a bronze tan within the last week and has oiled himself with lavender scents and snakes himself up next to you, laying down. Sorry. The room fades. We can't hear you, Sam. We know you're laughing. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah, I wanted to mute myself while I was laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing all loud. Muted myself while this is going. Made my eyelid run. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle, mm. you are. Startled awake by the sounds of rooting, things toppling over, drawers being opened and closed, cabinets being opened and closed, things otherwise being disturbed in your room. Abruptly, the closet door opens, the light blares into existence as someone stumbles in and starts rooting through the drawers in the dressing closet, opening and closing things, not noticing you or Zeke, stumbling about, eyes glazed over, a bit of drool crusted at the corner of the person's mouth. Languidly pulling things off of hangers and draping them about his shoulders. Annabelle is going to basically kind of like roll. It, once the person is at a point where they're kind of have their back to her, she's going to roll off of the uh, shelf 
onto the ground with Silence of Death activated. Uh, by the way, everybody make a rouse check, please. Yep, I passed yes, her. So, um, and she is going to uh, grab this individual by like the back of their neck and kind of just start lifting up so that their feet aren't touching the ground. There's a brief squeal of surprise as your grip tightens on a gurgling throat. If you failed your rouse check, you gain hunger as you rise from slumber. Ezekiel. I'm going to investigate. Uh, yes, I'm going to investigate these noises. Uh, that's you opening your eyes. You slumbered in the closet, yes? Yes. Then what you see is Annabelle descend from the shelf that she had positioned herself on taking hold of the individual that was routing through the closet lifting them by the throat from behind free of gravity and their own feet a quick gurgly squirk <gasps> as her hand tightens about the individual's throat how glazed do their eyes look if I can look um, at their eyes? Z, give me wits and awareness. Yep. Four. You immediately recognize the physical manifestations of someone who is completely glazed out of their brain. Miss Annabelle, that that that, mm, that is breakfast. Please, would you put down the breakfast? <clears throat> Annabelle is going to. Uh, she's not going to lower the person. She's going to physically just kind of like throw them down onto the ground. So, Annabelle chucks the Ooh. individual in Zeke's direction. And Zeke will check on the person, make sure they're breathing. They are completely breathing, yeah. though somewhat surprised, though it fades quickly as they start rolling their hands through the plush carpet in the closet. The person actually leans down, turning a cheek towards the carpet and starts rubbing his face against it wordlessly yeah. muttering things that are unintelligible he's going to stroke this person's hair there there they pause there. accepting you're the fine. attention yes you're good don't worry you're in good hands as he keeps muttering sweet nothings into this person's ear as his breath gets closer and closer to the nape of the neck before sinking in and drinking. Zeke, this happens. This is something you are deft at. This is oh, a practiced yeah. art. Easily you drink again, taking yourself to one hunger. Unless you decide that this life is worth taking. This life is not worth taking. This life does not belong to me. We are only taking this to one. Annabelle, your beast scratches at the nape of your neck, almost in disgust. How can you let this thing live? pathetic back of her head Annabelle is just going to respond with what thing do you mean Mr. White or do you mean the thing on the floor yes both of them in due time Mr. White is going to serve his purpose and then he will befall something I'm akin to peckish Ah, it's I feeding. know. I know, but we must 
do these things in a semblance of order. What order is that? It's awake. Take it. <laughs> Not yet. Fine. Annabelle is going to walk over to Echoes Mr. White. Quietly into oblivion. <laughs> Once Mr. White looks like he's done having his his share, uh, Annabelle is going to hold her. She's going to hold her her hand out to Mr. White. Mr. White, you don't forget your dessert. <laughs> Almost gleefully, you'll see the very glazed over look in his eyes. Oh, dessert. <laughs> right, dessert. As he, again, takes her hand and gives it a bite for dessert. Annabelle, I assume that you, again, enact the bond. Yes, this is, should take it to level four. Yes. Deepening Noting. the infatuation mm. that Mr. Ezekiel White continually feels now. Deepening the draw mm. from yourself to him. You can see the look in his eye, his pupils once dilated from ingesting the inebriated vitae of the mortal return to normal as his body rejects the poison and gives him back his consciousness as fleeting as it was the moment is over for Mr. White and his feeding. <laughs> mm. Um, Mr. White, it's time we find our compatriots. Yes. I, mm, yes, yes, yes. Let us. I Mr. will. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I will take the inebriated person, lie them on the bed. You deserved a little nap, don't you? Are you, are you dominating this individual? No, 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 no. Just asking. He, he looks as though he tries to say something, but his tongue kind of lulls in his mouth. A little bit of drool escapes. Um, there's some utterance of some unintelligible vowels and consonants that rolls out of them. You're not sure if they agree with you or not but they curl up again on the carpet, rubbing, lulling themselves to sleep. Leave them, Ooh. Mr. White. Join me at my side. Oh, no. He, the second that uh, the, the person kind of acquiesced, he, he is right at her side. Excellent. As they leave the room, Annabelle is going to kind of like lick her hand wherever it was that Mr. White bit her, so... Oh, he would have cleaned it. He would have made sure okay, it sealed. Well, there you go. Second, I need to check a couple of things. Storyteller not prepared. I, I do want to say, okay. when I woke up, I passed. I did two rouse checks to heal my four points of, aggro, of superficial damage, and I gained one point of hunger off of that. So Excellent. Oh, anybody, no, you'll get taken care of later. Anybody who needs to resolve stains of yep. humanity, I need you to roll... Your unstained, unspent humanity, please. Five successes. Virginia, Five successes it is well. not difficult for you to <laughs> rationalize out everything that's gone on. Your old hat. These things that tempt your humanity are just another Tuesday. Likewise, Zeke, you've been got through four. enough. You've 
seen enough that your actions now seem more every day, making it easier for you to accept the consequences of things you've done, or at the very least, to let them roll off your back as if they didn't affect you. Maintaining your current humanity. Sam Smith. As you rise, the sun dipping below the horizon. You are at what? Currently hunger three? No, one. One? I, 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 I succeeded on my rattle shake when I woke up this morning. Okay. And when I fed for Virginia last night, I was at one. Okay. There is at your bedside a blinking LED next to the headset. So I see that the LED is blinking, which means the headset is on, and I go and answer it. Uh, Mr. Smith, this is Joanne of the house. Ah, Joanne, how are you this evening? I am perfectly well, thank you. I hope you rested well. Oh, I did. It was the most comfortable rest I've ever had. Reminds me of home. So glad you find our accommodations acceptable, Mr. Smith. It is a good compliment. I will be sure to relay that to Alfred when he arrives. Do you require anything? We're, we're not um, told of your particular tastes. Well, I don't need anything right now. I'm not really Are you thirsty certain? right now. We can provide I anything, per- sir. Um, I could use a fresh shirt and a fresh pair of pants. Oh, by all means, if you'll please check the closet in your slumber we made sure that there were suits appropriate for a man of your person why thank you i walk over to the closet and i see the suits and i say huh if alfred has done this he has still has very nice taste we aim to please mr smith if there's anything else have have the others awakened yet, or is it just me? I believe some Being have, yes. Mm-hmm. Although no one's no one's come from their rooms yet. Um, well, I I really don't need anything right now. As you wish, sir. Just let us know. Thank you. You're most welcome. And I put down the headset and I go and change my clothes. You will find things tailored to fit of the latest stylish fashions and producers. Mr. Toon. Yes. Likewise, the disappearance of the sun tugs at your conscious mind. Rising to the odd smell of some kind of butane you're not sure almost a burning scent in the air yeah i'm definitely going to get up and investigate <laughs> as you do on the on a serving table that has been brought into your room not far from the door is a chafing dish hmm. with one of those sterno candles underneath Perfect Some bags silver. in it, I assume. <laughs> you will find three bags, three warmed, fresh pints. Mm. So I'm going to drink uh, probably two of those and uh, sock one away for later. Might come in handy. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to check the closet, hopefully, because uh, Miss Stone's taste is... Wonderful, but not exactly me. The clothes that you find in there are what you would expect the St. Clair estate to provide. There are designer suits. Um, 
Yeah. You will find no leather biker jackets. No, just no something Metallica in black t-shirts. with rolled up sleeves is fine. <laughs> but something yeah, in are, black and rolled up sleeves. Yeah. There's plenty of pairs of slacks and black shirts. Um, ties to match if you wish to put one on. Jackets, likewise, <laughs> if yeah. you wish to put one on. Um, and nice polished shoes to match. That'll do. Uh, is there a paper around? Uh, strangely enough, there is. Excellent. Uh, I'd like to give that a look over and see if there's anything of note. Um, I won't even make you roll wits and awareness to notice your picture on the front page of the Prince William Times. Oh, awesome. Although it's not a perfect picture, there's a little fuzz. It's clearly from the incident at the parking garage. Yeah. Investigation continues. The headline Shit. reads All right. Assailant at large. A brief description. I'm going to head out of the room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to split. Likewise, Major, your needs meet and greet you when your eyes crust open. Uh, as I look over and I see the woman with raven black hair and cerulean blue eyes look over to me, I immediately blush and I fail that route check as well as my beast decides to rear its ugly head. And I gently take her wrist and kiss it. I look at, and I look her square in the face as I sink fang in to supple flesh. She gives an almost quiver of pleasure as you do. The sensation of a vampire's kiss making itself evident and known. And she enjoys it. And I will lick the wound closed gently as I satiate my hunger down to one. And I will look her in the eyes and I will say, I will never forget this her eyes and use yes and use cloud memory her eyes dilate almost immediately growing to the size of saucers as a blank look crosses her face she looks around casually walks to the bed and collapses into a slumber. And I will cover her and I'll give everyone save Jonathan Keats a wits and awareness. Oh, geez. Uh... As this does not apply to you, sir. <laughs> Four successes. Three. I got three. Uh, four with a critical. Okay. Four. Everybody with three or more. Um, Tim, this really doesn't apply to you as you're the first one exiting a room. Uh, but the rest of you hear the muffled sounds of a door opening and closing and light pads a footfall outside your rooms. I go to leave my room. All the, uh, sorry, Major, all the residential suites are on the same floor down a, a, a single hallway. Um, so yeah, that questioning look in your face is everybody can hear Tim's door opening and closing, though you don't know whose room that is. I will pull up the security feed from the hallway. Easy enough. Uh, Virginia, you exit your room shortly after and see Tim closing his door. 
there is a strange um, emptiness, no guards, no servants running around. Um, it's quiet on the residential floor of the estate. Good evening, Mr. Toon. Good evening, Miss Stone. I trust you slept well. <laughs> uh, haven't slept well in many nights, unfortunately. Yeah, I know what you mean. And at that, I'm going to wander down the hall, probably towards the music room. I'm definitely going to follow her. Okay. <laughs> Major, you do see the two of them exit their rooms and heading down the hallway uh, exactly as dictated. I would like to uh, pick up the handset. Alfred. Uh, yes, Major. Has Mr. Keats's needs been seen too? <laughs> they have, sir. Though there was an incident. I'm sure there was. Is there anything that needs to be cleaned up? We'll take care of it, though you may wish to address Mr. Keats. He's of sorts. Indeed. Uh, if he is no longer uh, parched, please see that uh, his companion is returned to her cell so that they may do whatever it is young lovers do. As and then you tell instruct, him, sir. And then tell him that I expect to see him in 15 minutes in the music room. As you instruct, sir. I will hang up the phone, and then I will go to Annabelle's room and knock lightly. Miss Annabelle, if you would please join, my, join me and Miss Stone and Mr. Toon in the music room, and if you would mind collecting Mr. Smith on your way. And I will proceed to the music room. And as he's knocking on the door, she's, yeah, she's probably standing on the other side of it. And then once he walks away, she's going to open the door. Okay. Zeke will fall. You see him walking down the hall. Annabelle's going to kind of look back and forth, like... I am not his fucking butler, and where would I, how would I know where Mr. Smith is? She's, uh, she's going to look at Zeke. Mr. White, do yes, Annabelle. pound on this wall and start yelling for Mr. Smith, please. Right away, Miss Annabelle. And he will proceed to pound on both sides of the wall. Mr. Smith! Thomas, as you're walking down the hall, you hear exactly that. Zeke starts going from door to door, pounding on the wall, yelling for Sam Smith. Sam, you don't need to make a roll to hear this ruckus. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. I'm just getting him to go out to the door. You hear Zeke yelling at the top of his lungs for Sam Smith from down the hallway. And I open my door and I say, what is it, Mr. White? What do you need? We have a summoning. Let's go, my friend. Yes. Who asked for me? The major asked for you, sir. Mm -hmm. We are to meet in the uh, uh, music room. Yes. And Please. I don't, I close my door behind me. I don't say nothing else. And I head to the music room. I will head to Annabelle's side wordlessly. The uh, ruckus ends as quickly as it started. <laughs> Annabelle is going to follow Mr. Smith since he seems to know where he's going. Oh, it's not hard. When you turn and look, you can see the major disappearing down the end of the hall and to the right. Mm. Well, I mean, I just don't know if the music room is like <clears throat> where it is exactly. And I just, it's since sure. I, Annabelle's never been here. So. Sure. Zeke will kind You'll of. You'll hear it too. Tell her. <laughs> yeah. Zeke will kind of point out, you know, if we go down this hall to the left, right, whatever. So Virginia and Tim, left. you both get to said music room. Um, it's adorned with several classical instruments, a baby grand piano, 
Um, and within just a couple of moments, you hear the voice of Zeke yelling and the pounding, a muffled pounding from where you previously were. I shake my head and I'm going to sit down at the baby grand piano and I'm going to pop off and start to play. Okay. <laughs> so, um, give us some performance and wits. Okie dokie. Actually, charisma and performance. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm pretty sure both are four. Performance and what was the other one? Sorry, I've forgotten already. Charisma. Charisma. Yeah, sorry. ADD. I can't remember anything. Um, and because it's social, it should be eight. And I have gotten seven successes. Um. Yeah. You start playing up a storm at this piano. Tim, she's incredibly good and commands attention. The sensation of awe fills the room, if not by her own presence, but that of her playing draws your attention immediately. It may not be your style of music, but skill <laughs> is hard to deny. It is both somber and angry. At the same time. <laughs> mm. uh, it's same brief. Got it. Major, as same you brief. come to the hallway, the, mu the music from the piano fills the air. As I approach the conservatory, I will... I'm assuming it's Dutch Doors... Actually, it's, it, there's no doors to this particular music room. It opens into a large space. Um, okay. Yes, I will enter, then I will enter the conservatory and, and, and take a seat, cross my legs, and I honestly marvel at the brilliance on, disp on display. I mean, beyond brilliance, this is absolute. She's a virtuoso. Never before have I seen or heard a, a Toreador able to tap into the artistic vein quite so well, and it is astonishing. She is known for her musical talents. Indeed. And I will... Though this revel. is a diverture from jazz. This is definitely not jazz what she's playing. <laughs> and I, well, I, regardless, I, you know, I will sit and listen to her play and wait for my hail and boon companions to join us. The trio of followers uh, shortly comes in uh, after the ceasing of Zeke's pounding and yelling and Sam exiting his room as the three of them march in the direction that the Major went only a few feet before music begins to fill the upstairs of the estate as you three of you uh, breach the hallway into the conservatory, AKA the music room, seeing there Miss Virginia playing away at the piano, the sensation of awe hitting you as you enter the room. The major sitting off to one side, Tim kind of standing aside from the piano and just kind of watching, almost mesmerized. I think I'm going to play for a few moments longer now that I have a full audience. You do indeed. And then... <laughs> Mr. Keats. And then after a few moments, I think I will... Well, when Mr. Keats joins, I guess, sorry. There's a slight crackle of sound that comes through. There's a, a controlled commanding voice on the other side. Please back away.
What do you do, sir? Who, who are you speaking to? You. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, yeah, so... Um, John, how do you excuse? So, probably I'm along. actually... Um, so, I'm actually uh, singing something to Grace as I'm stroking her hair, and I'm deeply regretting um, the violence I displayed towards the um, the handlers. So, uh, leave her, Johnny. Uh, leave her. I'm just singing, and I'm stroking Grace's hair, and I'm waiting for anything. Again, there's a crackle of sound as a voice uh, commanding comes through, uh, commanding you to back away. Yeah, I'll do that. Mr. Keats, are you in control of yourself? Yeah. The air differential hisses quickly as the door begins to open. There's a trio of the armored individuals again from earlier in the day with riot shields as the door opens, pointing familiar weapons at you. I do. I do apologize, gents. Um, I probably need to eat some more. One looks at another, nods briefly, and a tray is passed in to the room on the floor and kicked in your general direction. Another three pints of bagged blood on the tray. Um, I will take one and leave two with, uh, with Ada. She does not acknowledge anyone at the door turns her head to you only slightly raising a hand over her shoulder as if to touch you and wave goodbye as she seems to have the understanding that she's not leaving. Look, I'll get you on as soon as I can. We're never leaving again, Jonathan. Go do what you have to. Look, hey, you're leaving. I may not leave, but you're going to leave. As you say, I'm sorry, and I'll get up and I'll walk. They slowly back as you near the door of the cell. They give you a quick once over holstering their hey, tasers this probably doesn't mean a lot but can you tell that 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 person that um i kind of lost it on that i'm i'm sorry one of them gives you a brief nod before he says look the majors hey, all yours. the majors requested that you clean yourself up and join them Upstairs in the conservatory. We've prepared a and room for you, Mr. Keats. I don't want a room for me. Can you, can you get a room for her? I'll sleep in the cell. As you hear the metal on metal slide as the door closes, the bar sliding into place as the cell once again seals. This way, Mr. Keats, if you please. Look, Chance, I know you're, you're just doing your job, but please make sure she, she's okay. She's safe for now, Mr. Keats. Yeah, I'll go with you. 
They escort you out of the cells, up the elevator, back to the main estate, up the stairs to the second floor. You can hear piano music being played from somewhere down the hall. It's pretty incredible, though maybe a bit somber or macabre. They escort you to a they escort you to a particular room and open the door. You will find adequate clothing inside. And they motion back down the hall towards the sound of the music. When you are ready, please join the major. I will uh, change my shirt and go to, when, towards the music. When you go in the room, they disappear. They they leave. Um, you have a few moments alone as you change. Um, if you take notice, it's a five star room. If you went to the most extravagant hotel, this would put it to shame. Uh, I was about to say that means like zero. Yeah, right, right now, now for that me. means nothing to Jonathan. We know this. Um, but the the clothes are immaculate. They're tailored to fit you. Uh, they they fit perfectly. They look exquisite. Again, we know this does not matter to Jonathan. When you exit the room, um, you still hear the music and are drawn in that particular direction. When you turn the corner, you see your gathered coder. Yes, Annabelle. I'm gonna say if uh, if there's a violin there, Annabelle is going to pick it up. Okay. Um, She's feeling uh, in the mood. All means charisma and performance. Oh, okay. <laughs> well. I mean, while that's going on, Sam is sitting uh, far away from everybody as possible because he's still just waking up and really not in the mood to talk to anybody at the moment. Sure. No, that's perfectly understandable. Yep. One success. So Annabelle picks up a violin oh. and makes an attempt. <laughs> Now, you should have rolled three dice for that. I did. Okay. I rolled one success. <laughs> okay. And she tries to accompany Virginia. And the first stroke of the bow on the string sounds like a dying cat. <laughs> it's off key, <sighs> out of it's tune. Exciting. And can cause one to cringe. The the notes so, would be perfect if it were meant to disturb. Virginia so, changes key to fit the misplayed <laughs> note. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Sam would, would sigh, walk over to Annabelle, <laughs> and just snatch the violin out of her hand and starts to play it himself. Okay, so at this point, Jonathan, as so, you so, turn to look. You see briefly Annabelle pick up a violin. Starts to play. It's it, it's guttural. It's it's bad. Virginia, you notice, is now at the keys and actually changes what she's playing to match whatever note Annabelle scratched <laughs> out. As you see, Sam Smith approaches her. Sam, I got roll. six successes on that. I got six successes on that. I actually took it out of her Sam, hand and I played beautifully. Sam Smith snatches the violin and bow from Annabelle unless she resists. Um, mm -hmm. after scratching out a couple of notes, <laughs> Annabelle's just going to kind of look at him like, "What? Like, <laughs> I'm out of practice. Sorry, um, Mister Smith." Mr. Smith uh, begins to play as she talks, along with Virginia as she strikes the keys. And everyone is now in the room. Uh, I'm going to start singing to myself, um, if you want me to roll up for whatever I By can. By all means, please roll charisma oh and performance. 
Okay, okay oh, after no. all that shit shit that happened dumb. last night, I think we need some little lifting up. I don't know how a messy crit would work, but um, if four successes. Oh, damn. Okay. At four successes, I don't know what words you're coming out with, but if you're like humming along or or what have you, it's on point. Like the mood that she's playing is very somber and macabre. Sam, I, I'm picturing, I'm I'm picturing uh like the vocals like sounding utterly inhuman, and just me <laughs> like but strangely along. correct. Yeah. <laughs> it is an odd ambiance. <laughs> it is an odd ambiance in this room as this desperate collection of personalities coalesces around music. I have no doubt that this would be odd for both Tim and the Major, and possibly <laughs> Annabelle. Zeke's knowing who these backs. people are. Tim's thinking to himself, nobody would sign this band ever. <laughs> what in the hell? So that <laughs> is where thing, we're though. at. There is a strange cacophony. <laughs> yeah, but Zeke got six successes on that roll. So uh, he's playing beautifully. On yes. That uh, <laughs> again, there is this yeah. odd cacophony of sound emitting from the conservatory as the Piano not bad. and violin, and the strangely guttural, Screaming. almost Gregorian <laughs> chant like voice of Jonathan Keats chimes in, and it meshes oddly in a weird mix as Virginia's awe settles in on top of all of it. I think I'm going to play for probably a couple moments longer. And then I'm going to stop playing and drop off. I was going to say, uh, Miss Stone, I. Oh, she was I'm enjoying it. Your... Oh, yeah. She did that oh, the yes. second she sat oh, down I to play. I would like to resist. I would like yeah. to resist that in that case. <laughs> okay. So yeah. we're not going to so turn you you. back the clock. <laughs> I, I, we, I, I, I misheard. I apologize. Yeah, it's, we're, it's we're a, yeah I didn't realize she had all on either. I the, did. The odd <laughs> instance of her playing, Annabelle taking up a violin, Sam snatching it from her, and Jonathan Keats showing up adding vocals was enough to distract the major and allow the awe to hit. Okay. Uh, it, it is an uh, odd uh, thing. Once, uh, yeah, but she stops uh, playing and drops the awe. Okay, I'm gonna turn to Mr. Toon. Bit of feeling of deja vu again, Mr. Toon. Yeah, I was gonna suggest something a little more thematically appropriate, but you know, we're here now. And when Sam mm. finishes, he finishes this with a flourish and then puts down the violin in the bow. Not expecting much else, he goes back to where he was sitting at. Are we all finished then? Yes, sir, Major. I, sir. I nod graciously, though I do not get up from the piano bench. I just turn to face. I don't say anything because I know my place in this matter. White, please do not use my title so in such a patronizing manner. If you're going to say it, say it with def deference and respect, not with oozy intent. Yes, Major. My apologies, Major. That being said, <clears throat> the most pressing thing right now is to cover up the breaches that have occurred. <sighs> At which point the major will go over to the. I would like with the paper on it. I would like to be uh, a bit forthcoming, if if I may be. One moment, please, and he will hold up the the front page with Mister Toon's face on it. So. Coterie of Jude.
I so christen thee. <laughs> How are we going to handle this? <laughs> well, uh, Jude is a patron, patron saint of lost causes. And, and there you see the humor. Appropriately. Um, I seem to have lost a couple of books that may be important that are important to whatever entity stacked my house because of this fucking uh, debauchery that I have found myself in. We have found ourselves in. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. <laughs> Everyone, lower your temperatures more than they already are. <laughs> um, we have a very pressing concern. Our resident Bruja is front page news. How are you going to handle it? I don't really know, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we could find a Patsy, maybe? I don't know. But other than that, um, there's no Whoa. evidence, there's no crime. Mr. Toon, don't you have a lackey within the department? I do. <laughs> That's led us to some trouble, though, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Unfortunately, it appears he's been co-opted by our friends in the SI. I did quite like him, though. It's not a bad fellow. Mix in with the wrong sort, you know. I do think that I have a little bit of sway with the local police force. Well, I after don't know our how much good it would do. Last little adventure. I'm not. Itching to go back. Uh, obviously, I'll do whatever's required to handle this situation, but whatever you all think is prudent. Mr. I am Keats. open to suggestion. Let's, let's put a pit in that. Mr. Keats, you had something you wanted to bring up. I apologize for diverting from you. What was it? Major, Don't. can I get you to project a little bit more? <laughs> Yes, I apologize. Don't, Mr. Keats, apologize I apologize to me. You know your station. I know your station. Manners, dear boy. Manners. <laughs> we'll see if I'm a boy. I but... ask that you exercise them the same way that I try to exercise them. Absolutely. Um, so I have some rather uh, telling books kept from uh t taken from my estate do you happen to know where they are no but that um lovely bit of footage that you keep fucking posting um would probably be uh, a benefit mr toon actually took care of that and it it is much appreciated well we shall make use of our liaisons with the local police force to ascertain their whereabouts. I imagine they're in some evidence locker or other. Do you know how long I've been employed by the Tremere? Why don't you tell me? It's been a, it's been a while. The very first pre most pressing bit of business is, is to get you all havens and new identities. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a little difficult seeing as I run a nightclub. I don't know, it's easy <laughs> as pie. Well, um, since I'm technically on leave, it's no problem if you give me a new identity. Mr. Keats, you seem to have something you wish to say. The most pressing matter is uh, Ada being out of here and all the information 
uh, all the books that was taken from my haven be procured, and then we have a fucking lupine problem, or guru, or whatever you call those fucking wolves. Lupine, you say? Yeah, I do say. And do not worry for Miss Ada. Her accommodations are being seen to now. And I assure you that they are going to be vastly improved from where she spent the previous night. However, as previously stated, she will remain my guest. Um, she will be very well taken care of as per my guarantee unto you. Miss Stone, Mr. Toon, you said you had contacts in the police force. I have some source of sway over them, I do believe, yes. Yes, I have uh, contact as a uh, detective with the SVU. What is an SVU? The Special Victims Unit. Crimes against children, families, etc. Women, rapes, etc. Ah, uh, you all know I did much take about that, quite don't the you? Light in Detective Bacon. <laughs> oh yes, and the ironic name. <laughs> really, that's what sold me on him in the first place was the name. I expect nothing less from you, Mister Tune, on that regard. Well, we all make our choices, Mister White. That we do, and. We make better ones in the future. One can certainly hope. So, moving forward, would you like me to reach out to Detective Bacon? Yes, and Miss Stone, you as well, reach out to your contacts. Try do your best to ascertain the location of these tomes, so that they might be remitted back into Mister Keats's possession. Forgive me, Major, but I feel like uh, an in-person. Meeting with Detective Bacon may yield fruitful results, um, provided we are able to influence him in some fashion. Oh, may I be present? In... How have you influenced him in the past? I have not. Who has? <laughs> I might have. Mm, yes, Miss Stone, you have. <laughs> I did like him. And this in no way, shape, or form violates the masquerade? No, he was told to forget. Very good. He doesn't know what I am. Let this be your watch phrase, if you will. Veil your transactions. Cover your tracks. Ensure witnesses are either silenced or removed. The most important thing is the masquerade, and I will suffer no breaches therein. Am I clear? Of course. Yes. Very good. Yes, Major. Yes, Major. Then deploy yourselves as you see fit and report back to me with your progress. Miss Annabelle? Yes, Major. You know what it is you're supposed to be doing, ascertaining who Mr. White's benefactor is. Yes, I will have to speak to Dr. <laughs> Vice and have her provide me with that information. I, uh... Would you like me to still have that meeting? With whom? Refresh my memory. The Angel of Cain? No, you will have no association with that creature. Well, you see, the thing is, I'm not exactly in a position to ever, ever say no to anyone. So um, they are probably going to be looking for me. So, and the fair chances of 
them getting back to me. I should probably have that conversation, don't you think? Or I can use you as a worm on a hook and they will come looking for you here, at which point my forces and the forces of the Justicars can eliminate that threat. That's more than fair. I'm just simply stating these facts. What is it you hope to gain from talking to Jonathan that for the better part of two centuries, silent voice in the back of your head pokes up. It's in the guise of Percy. Are you kidding me right now? These fucking blue bloods? We've got shit to do. You've got things to do. We we have to get yeah. out of this place. You need to get us out now. Mercy. Now. Um, They're, I'm coming not used to, They're coming I'm not for used us. They're coming for us now. Differentiating the two. So I'm, I'm going to say this out loud. And I'm like, I Mercy. Um. <clears throat> No, um, I have things uh, to. He things to, to benefit from this. In the back of your head, they took my hand. Just, just bear with us. Just bear with us, Percy. Can we all hear this? And they took her. I know they took her, Percy. Yeah, you can definitely hear this. Well, at least my, my side of it. Major Percy is the kind entangled with the guru issue. Just you know, in case you were not aware of that fact. At this point, I think I'm going to walk over and put a reassuring hand on Jonathan's shoulder. And I'm going to say, center yourself, friend. You've been through a lot. <laughs> I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. An you understatement, should... I'm sure, but... No, you should... No, those that I, I fluffed in my wake deserve way better than this. Mr. Keats, let me make you painfully aware of something. People deserve what they get, nothing No. More. I will. <laughs> you can do whatever to me, but I will cut you off. That people deserve way better. Silence. And I will use. Um, why can I not think of the power? Mesmerize. I am successful on the rouse check. Yeah. I'll Give in to the whatever it is. Okay. No rolls are necessary. I Mr. Keats calms down you. abruptly as the Major commands him to. Seems completely out of character for the moment. We will address each issue as it arises and per its priority. For now, I believe it behooves us to adjourn and see to our individual tasks. Mr. Keats, I believe there is somebody who would like to talk to you down in the residence floor. As for the rest of you, see to your duties, please. Major, am I clear to leave Mr. Keats here? If you wish to take him with you, then take him with you. However, you are accountable for him. 
So if I'm... you wish to leave him here, that is at your discretion, Mr. Toon. Toon, I'm... I'm not going to call this an issue. He will get us out of here. Go with him. Go with him. We've got to get I know you've been through a lot, place. but a lot's going to go through you if you fuck me. Just so we're clear. See you in a few hours. You think the worst thing that could happen to me is death? I'll be imaginative. <laughs> so, I'm assuming I'm going with Mr. Toon to go have a chat with the detective. Please, um, Miss Stone. I'm going to turn and look at Sam. And I'm going to say, I think my anger got the best of me. I would like to extend you an olive branch, so to speak. The club does need managing. Sam, your beast speaks up. She's just going to offer you her fucking wrist again. What are you, a fucking slave? Never mind. Get out of here. This place is poison. So I am ignoring my beast, which makes my right eye twitch because my beast is annoying as fuck. And I accept Virginia's olive branch. I'm going to walk close to him and speak like, no, I'm not trying to hide what I'm saying, but it's more directed to Sam. You know, say, please be careful. Fiona is watching. And I'd rather not lose the few friends that I have. Yes, Miss Stone. She's got a funny way of naming friends, doesn't she? My right eye twitches as I continue to ignore my beast. So, Miss Stone. Yes. A plan. Yes. I think probably a uh, neutral territory would be good for meeting. I do have private meeting rooms at the club. Mm. If. I don't know that he would come if you invited him. I think I oh, would he... have to invite him. He did quite like me last time. <laughs> Oh, this is Though true. I don't know if he remembers me. <laughs> well, I certainly hope not. I'm willing to call, but if you would prefer to try and bid him to join us. Virginia and Tim. Both of you give me an, an intelligence and awareness. Or, I'm sorry, intelligence and insight. Okay. What is that saying? I'm going to find my insight. Oh. Annabelle, Oops. I will give you the same role. I got four. In what? Intelligence In and three. insight. Uh, two successes. Annabelle, it really doesn't wow. interest you, this whole thing that they're deciding to go off and do. But Virginia and Tim, the light bulb kind of goes off for the both of you. Recalling mm -hmm. the events, the night that you were all at the Prince William Police Department. Mm. the fact that persons were arrested taken into custody broken out there's no way in hell that those actions were not caught on some camera or another we did tell him to make sure there was no evidence of us being there we specifically <laughs> I did that's, while that's he was a entranced. Big, that's a big trust to put on a kind nobody followed up with after the fact. Well, he is a I'm three just saying, pip 
contact. It's only been two nights. Yeah. Uh, not since the incident at the, <clears throat> at the police department. It's been longer than that. No? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's been like, it's been like four, four or five four. nights. I lose, I lose track. Yeah. They all blend. So <laughs> I, I'm just saying that the two of you have this light bulb moment of going, oh, wait. We had incidences there. Many of the coterie were involved. And maybe showing up there again with Tim's face on the front page of the newspaper, on the previous nice plan. news, on TV. Maybe not the best of plans. There's got to be a different way. There's got to be a better way of well, approaching this. I wasn't going to go to the precinct. Can we no send someone to anywhere. fetch him? Oh, wait a minute. I have a, a certain set of skills. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah. suggest, I suggest we find somewhere um, a mutual meeting ground that I can bring this individual to. Yes, but it should be mm, discreet. Yes. Uh, Major, somewhere do you we have know. any suggestions? Yes. Hmm. Perhaps an establishment not owned by any of you, some place with low lights, dark corners, and loud music. I'm sure there are enough loud clubs in the area. I'll have to dress down, but that can be arranged. Tim, my dear, no ahead. matter what you wear, you are never dressed down. There's this tickle in the back of your head. And for some reason, pictures of the entrance to the three monkeys flashes across your brain. And yeah, there's I was this hint say, of why laughter. Don't we... In the back of your head, like <laughs> I, irony, irony. Why don't, we do, why don't we do the set the three monkeys? That's because I would love to see Maurice this evening. Absolutely great idea, Mister Keats. I would all you know, love to see Maurice. I feel like um, we may be able to take care of two birds with one stone. You know, uh, let me be the uh, fodder, if you will, um, unless, until Major, you had anything for me. Major, what's an insight? Uh, can I add my fortitude? For what's an <laughs> insight? No. <laughs> Am I detecting lies? No, no, but you are detecting um, very um, me seething with anger, as you mentioned the three monkeys. Oh, one, two, three, four successes. That's that's <laughs> enough you for want... you to put two and two together. The dossiers that you've read uh, about the kindred in the coterie, as well as the occurrences that have gone on the fact that the three monkeys is a place where maurice Tellon is known to hang out the harpy um it's been mentioned in two or three of the different dossiers and passing it just occurs you to wrinkle an eyebrow at why they're all mentioning this at once i do believe my information is correct. The three monkeys. Three monkeys, yes. Is the domain of the harpy. If well, you would like to speak with the harpy, I'm sure I could draw him in. <laughs> if the harpy wasn't a <laughs> subot bastard, yeah. 
Oh, no. you, Who is he you, to you, deny his own you child? Can't, you can't. That's, that's, that's a very house. interesting claim to make against a member of the court, Mr. Keats. Do you well, have any evidence to back it up? You know, they were the the lead, the um, the fuse to uh, to hold the audience with me and Vicus. <laughs> don't don't speak about the angel of Cain like that, Mister Keats. I remind you, you are a member of the Camarilla. I am a servant of the Camarilla at best. But yes, I serve the Camarilla. You can see I have much work to do. Major, forgive my interruption, but I do have uh, quite a bit of evidence that the Harpy is in fact part of the Sabat faction in this domain. At least a Sabat sympathizer. If nothing else. Virginia is pretty gleeful. Mm, I, I was about <laughs> to comment that. on that. <laughs> and why, Miss Stone, does this appear to bring such a air of glee to your face? Oh, you know. Me and Father Dearest have always gotten along so well. Oh, he's your sire. <laughs> oh, that's a really loose term, but yes. No, it isn't. He either made you or he did not. Oh, the he term made is rather me. quite concrete, so he is your sire. Very well. <laughs> I... Annabelle. Yes. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. This is is this is this indicative of how business is done in this domain, Miss Annabelle? I do not know, Major Delaney. It's only been a short while since I've been back here, and this is not normal to me. Though I do believe they speak true. I spoke with the harpy mr tellon was very how do i say not very caring that he seemed to let speak of sabat activities slip from his lips and when questioned he mentioned that my primogen, Kyla Lupo, has been seen there cavorting with individuals and such. So I have my suspicions of her as well. But I have nothing concrete on her yet. But... Well, didn't you pick up that, that elder guy at the Three Monkeys? <laughs> yeah. He Did was you? consorting with Maurice, wasn't he? Yes, Mr. Tellon was <laughs> acting as an intermediary for a Sabat elder to find Mr. White, who he wanted to speak to Mr. White. Annabelle, when what? He sh yes. What happened to that elder? Just curious. She I, said he was tortured. I attempted to interrogate him, and when those... Talks broke down. I ate him to rid this world of one more monster. Wait, you, you did what? <laughs> not, I ate not, him, Mister Keats. I mean, I'm not disapproving, but if it's an interesting take on the traditions or whatever they are, he falls outside the traditions, Mister Keats. He is the enemy. He was looking for information from Mr. White specifically on... Sorry, one second. I have to get the name. Mr. Uh, Toon. No, it wasn't Mr. Toon. He was looking for... Mr. Rocca. 
He's looking for you, fool. Mr. Quince. He felt Mr. White had information on the primogen, Mr. Quince. Which I gave none of. You didn't have the chance to speak, Mr. White, for I rammed a stake right through his heart. That you did. He chose to be unpleasant with me and show disrespect when all I asked was his name. I have a question. Yes. Just how incestuous is this coterie with our sworn enemies, the Sabbat? Ah, uh, I hate the Sabbat, Major <laughs> Delaney. Incestuous. I have incestuous. spent my nights hunting those traitors for the tower. Oh, I, you are absolutely correct, Miss Annabelle. It Major. Was, it was inaccurate of me to include you in that. Are you are you speaking at me or to me? Soon, you're, you're accountable. Amend well, your war dead in his eyes. Attitude. I, I simply want to live this on life now. This domain, if you want to call it, has been Sabat, Anarch, Camarilla, whatever, for a very long time. And there's no difference, honestly. Now, you have leverage over me, and I acknowledge that. Now, I will comply, but... Your precious Camarilla has done nothing for me. I am a slave in the house. I am meant to serve, but never to indulge. Speak? Yeah, that's probably probably a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Mr. Tin. Yeah. Um, Major? I hate the Sabbat. They are traitors to the tower. They have dirtied the tower by being said traitors. I want them gone. First thing that you have said that I can agree with, Mr. Smith. So, Major, the, I... The harpy is also Camarilla. Mr. Keats, please. Thank you. He will get his day of judgment, Mr. Keats. Major, I had the unfortunate experience of tangling with my own primogen over this affair. Said you had evidence. I did. Do. You do. Retrieve it. Miss Annabelle, if you will accompany him. Miss Stone, bring your mortal contact. Oh, it's who's ever contact it is, yours or Mr. Toons. Bring them here. Hmm. Mr. Keats, go see Alfred. He will take you to where your paramour is being lodged. Mr. White. Yes, Major. Any insight you may be able to garner would be of great benefit. And Mr. Smith. Yes, Major. I, need I you think to... we're going to pause here, guys. Um, that's why I'm giving I'm everyone sorry. orders. <laughs> Look at <in> his face. <laughs> and Mr. Mr. Smith, please assist Miss Stone in her efforts. Does everyone have their orders? Yes, Major. Yep. Yes. Execute, mm -hmm. please. 
I am to company and help. That's it. We're going to take a brief break because the ST is about to explode. <laughs> Be right back. Happy look on his face. He's ready to go. Thank you for sticking with us, viewing audience. Uh, I apologize. That was absolutely my fault entirely. <laughs> <laughs> my eye teeth were floating. <laughs> and I was begging my players, I've got to go. <laughs> and so... As we uh, left off, the Major was issuing orders in hurried, rapid succession. Discussion uh, reconvenes. Mm -hmm. So, I guess then I can drive a little ways away from here with Mr. Toon. I can do my... Super cool. Uh, what what do the kids well, call the, it? I mean, the major said uh, bring him here. Yeah. 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 I so I, I was going to the location in case if he's got friends. So I'll go oh, down the road a little bit. Do the uh, the kids call it the Jedi mind tricks and bring him hither. The kids have been called that since Wait, the eighties. I thought I was with oh. Virginia, and Tim was off with Annabelle to go do something else. No, I unless mean, that was right. Unless that was changed. Annabelle is supposed to go with Tim to retrieve the evidence. Virginia and you were supposed to uh, go get the contact and then bring them back here. No, go meet the contact and figure out where the the books are. Mm -hmm. What you did send... I tell Ezekiel to do? He wanted insight on with. Yes, <laughs> it, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I needed him to, uh, you know, throw his bones, whatever the hell a. Malkavian does to and you divin. send Jonathan off to go talk to Alfred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess player to ST. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I know that I have those two dots of influence for the police, and Detective Bacon isn't necessarily my contact, and nor do we have that sort of repertoire that Tim and Detective or Detective Bacon has. So how? How would I use my influence? You've met him before. I have, but... And you've influenced him before. I Absolutely. But what I'm saying is I actually am supposed to have influence with the police in general, and how can I use that? Like, I, I want to use it to help oh, me get I these get items you. without going through Detective Bacon if I have to, because he already knows about you and me. So... And I'd rather not make a bigger stink. Your influence with the police is easy enough to leverage. You can contact who you know and say, I really need to talk to so-and-so. How can I get a hold of him? How, how can we get his attention? Um, there's a hundred different ways you can leverage that to get the attention of Detective Bacon. Well, see, that's, I don't think that's necessarily what I'm going for here. I'm trying to retrieve the evidence from the police. So I, I almost think what I want to do is say, hey, um, there are a couple of items in your lockup that belong to me, and I would like them, and use my influence to have them given to me. Okay. So do That's we all have viable. an idea of what we're doing? I, you, you're you're all still there in the conservatory. Yes, I've been told to go get these items. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, if Virginia, if you're going to summon him, uh, I can work on the evidence requested. I guess we, we could go that route, too. I just don't know which route to go with this to make it less messy. <laughs> Honestly, probably the easiest way is for me to not be involved, unfortunately. That's what I was thinking, not to involve Detective Bacon at all and just go through, um, go over and use my influence with the police to get the evidence brought to us. That will work. How much money do you need for this, Miss Stone? I promise you, I am quite well endowed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
very well. Uh, then by all means, grease the palms and retrieve what is ours. Mr. Toon. Major. Have a seat whilst they flit about to do their things. Tell very me well. about this evidence you have, please. Well, seems fitting to start at the beginning. So, so please. does Annabelle, Zeke, Sam, and Jonathan disappear from the conservatory at this point? I don't disappear. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, Annabelle was told to go with Mr. Toon to get the evidence that he had. So, and so she's, she's hanging out. So she's just hanging out. And, and yeah. And I go with the mistress goes. <laughs> And Perhaps so, this conversation might be best had in the boardroom. Very well. Proceed. I'll get mm. up and head to the boardroom. Sam, what are you doing, sir? Well, I was told by the major to go with Virginia. So where she goes, I go. Okay. If she's going to go deal with the issue of the evidence of the police, that's where mm. Sam's going to. So Virginia and Sam... Yes. As the other four, five, get up, exit the conservatory, heading down the stairs, and most likely to the boardroom, what are the two of you doing? Well, I think I'm going to be making some calls. And who would you like to call first? Well, um... I guess I'm going to call whoever I have influence with in the police department. Well, you certainly know <laughs> Chief Thompson, who is yeah. the chief of the Prince William Police Department. Um, he's a regular at the Haven Club. Both you and Sam know who he is. Um, though, towards his personal kind predilections for certain types of parties and party favors and party person's favors, um, you've been able to accommodate him and his ilk at the Haven under the scrutiny of discretion. Cool. So, so I'm going to give Chief... Sorry. So you definitely have leverage in, in that department. Um, the question is, is, is this particular thing worthy of that leverage. I guess I need to ask Mr. Keats that. Mr. Keats, before you go too far. Yes. This evidence that I am getting for you, would you mind, first of all, telling me what it is exactly that I am asking for? Evidence? You said there were certain items that the police had that you would like back? Oh, um, I mean, Shamir would probably like back uh, decades, centuries of um, research. <laughs> hmm. So I am <laughs> pulling my strings for a bunch of dusty tomes, hmm. is what you're telling me. That's a uh, light of the situation. Um, however, um, and all uh, the hits, um, a bit of lore, a bit of science, a bit of occult, uh, probably all three. This is quite a, a thing I'm about to try and pull. I try not to call upon people who owe me favors often. What I'm saying is uh, if you want to use this to benefit uh, kindred society and the whole fucking... Um, um, the cat out of the bag scenario. Um, get get my fucking research back. <laughs> oh, so emotional. Of course, I just wanted to make sure that what I am about to do is worth it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. All right. And he again follows the other four, leaving you and Sam. To your devices. I'm going to call the chief then. 
call his office, his personal phone, his home line. His personal phone. His cell phone. Yes. There's a couple of rings before it's answered. Virginia, I wasn't expecting a call from you. How are you? It has been a little bit of time since I've seen you at the club. A couple of weeks. I mean, you had that opening that was a blast. We had the party. Yes. Um, what, what, what can I do for you? It appears that I am in need, or I, I guess I need to call in a sort of favor, if you will. A, a, a favor? Of course. You know. Well, I mean, I if, cater to your if, if, I, if I can accommodate, of course I will. Perfect. And I assure you, I will make sure that you are rewarded handsomely for it. Um, it has come to my attention that it's, it's, it's a, a strange man, writes in riddles and all of that, but his belongings are quite personal to him, and I do owe him a little bit of a favor. And I was hoping, it, it, I think in a recent search of a property, you all came into possession of some tomes, myths, and all of that. You can almost hear him wrinkle his face and question as he pauses trying to understand what you're saying um uh they would be it would I'm, be a number of books and folders and they wouldn't I'm, make very I'm, much sense i'm i'm not ex virginia god love you but what are you talking about um I think there are a couple of belongings to my friend uh, that, that, that belong to a friend of mine that have come into your possession, and he would really, really like them back. And I, I hate to try and call favors, especially at this time of night. It's rather improper, but I, I do need them back. And as I said, I will ensure that but, your parties, uh, you know, uh, okay, we, can, we can continue uh, uh, to cater to your tastes. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time, um, no doubt. But I need a, a little more help. Who are we talking about? What are we talking about? When are we talking about? Because you're being a, a... To say vague is, is an understatement. Yes. Sorry, in my line of business, we, uh, we profit on being vague. I do believe uh, it, it would have belonged to Mr. Keats. Um, Something along those lines. It's it's a number of books that were, I guess, obtained in a raid of some sorts a number of nights ago. A, a raid? Where? Where? A raid? Where? I guess I'll name the place. Does she know Jonathan's address? I was um, there. Yes, yeah, yeah. she was there. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. That's okay. So that's near. That's near the railroad tracks down yes. in Old Town. When, when did this occur? I'll state whenever it was that Jonathan's belongings were ransacked. That last you, night. <laughs> you can hear him pausing as he's... He, he, the, the lack of response tells you that he's searching his brain. Like this isn't this isn't correlating to an event he's aware of, and he's really stumbling. Ooh. You can hear him umming. You know, he's, um, um. I of course I could be mistaken. He is he does tend to ramble. Mm -hmm. This writer friend of mine. Um, it's is, mostly been myths there, and legends he's been writing about, but is, is <laughs> he's there anything attached. else you can tell me? I mean, we don't have. I don't remember anything occurring at, at, well, at that address any any time. I well, then, my dear friend, is this I will someone I should be paying paranoia. attention to? Of course not. I'm just going to chalk it up to the paranoia of someone who spent too much time hiding and writing. I do appreciate this conversation, though. Uh, 
of of course um anything you need we're a friend is a friend and i'll look into it thank you do keep me posted if you find anything of course of course of course we're, you are welcome to the club anytime you would like, and I will make sure that whatever you desire is present. You, you, you can almost hear the sly smirk on his face. We can't wait for the next party. Of course. Hey, great to talk to you, Virginia. And, and look, if I, if I'll look into this. It's, I, I can't think of anything that's occurred recently but I'll ask around. I'll I'll talk to my buddies over at the sheriff department and see if do you did something happen? Can you point um, me in the right direction? Uh, I, it's just a bunch of old books and all of that. It's not really all that important, but it was important to him. So it it would do me a great pleasure to find them. Oh, I, I do actually have one more question before. Sure. Uh, what do you know about that, all that information that's been in the papers about that, uh, Mr. Soon, was it? There's a, there's a definitive pause. You can hear the tone of his voice change. Do you know the person that was on the front page? No, not personally. Oh, no. I just am very curious about the headlines. I wondered if you would know anything about that. I, it's, it's all over the papers and all over the news. I'm very curious. And I figured you're a good source to talk to. Virginia, is there something you're not telling me? <laughs> no, Inspector. Mr. Chief, it is nothing to be concerned about. I am merely just curious about the goings-ons in our community. It's very dreadful what I've seen on the news. Yeah, yeah, there's been some very concerning events lately. A lot of them in a I very short amount of time. Have they made any headway in their investigations? It's horrible for business, all of this hullabaloo about murders. You can hear his voice take on a more police-like attitude. Which investigations precisely? It's just whatever's in the paper. This, I'm sure the police this are all over whatever Mr. it was. Mr. Toon, you say? That's what I've heard. Is it not correct? I could be mistaken. Well, we've yet to ascertain the identity of the individuals in question. Hmm. Interesting. If you don't mind, I might actually still call in a favor. Sure. As it is absolutely dreadful for business. Is there any way you can possibly tone this investigation down <laughs> murders and all that the club just opened and i can't get people in with all of this business in town but wait this thing happened at the parking garage at the train station not at your club no it didn't you're absolutely right however word gets around and i can't seem to get anyone in from dc to come in because of all of the murders and stuff that's going on. The crime rate in this town is abysmal, and I would really appreciate if there's any way you can tone down the information in the newspapers. I would love you know, you know, to I, get more I, clients I, I do know somebody down at the Times. Although, you know, right now the look, the, the local the locals, they're on our asses to get answers. The stuff is continuing, it's going on and on and on. I don't know how much toning down I can do, but you know, for for you, I'll I'll make some calls. 
Perfect. And darling, if you may, discretion. Of course. Discretion is how I got to where I'm at. Of course. I enjoy this mutual friendship, and I would like to keep it that way. So would I. Have a good evening. Virginia, you do the same. I'm sure we'll talk soon. <laughs> and he hangs up. Sam, you heard this entire conversation. At least you heard Virginia's half of it. Uh-huh. I got my mouth shut, not saying a thing. Met it back in my head. I'm like, what are you doing? I am going to wander down the hall now after Major Delaney and Mr. Toon. Rather um, hurriedly, I think. I'm falling, but I back my mind. I'm like, what was she thinking? What was okay. she thinking? The the other five of you get to the boardroom taking up seats. And the conversation continues. So, what is it that you need to be, Major? Jonathan, we couldn't hear a word you said. Do you, do you see my predicament now, uh, Major or Delaney or whatever the fuck you prefer? I've, I've been alive for 200 fucking years or, or more. I don't know at this point. Um, I can handle myself, but I, I don't know what it is. It's in the, the water that's in the hold, air. Hold, hold, hold. I don't think we're aware of the conversation that was had. No. If that's what you're referring to. Oh, okay. You're referring to. I thought we were. I'm sorry. No, no negative. No, you all we had, went to the boardroom. We lined for the boardroom in Virginia, and Sam stayed back, and she made her phone yeah, call. Yeah, he, if I were aware of that conversation, that conversation <laughs> would come to a very abrupt end. Gotcha. Okay. Um, really? Glad you're entertained. Oh Can I get some God. gasoline cans from our viewers? I don't know. Right, for <laughs> real. I'm feeling really Please, right now. Just bam the chat with gasoline cans. Right down here that's just making me feel really warm. Hey, man. Uh, I feel like I'm going to need sunglasses in the near future. Uh, so, Mr. Toon. Major. <clears throat> Tell me about this evidence that you have against... Poppy. Well, let's start at the beginning. Um, you may or may not be aware, was bidden to this domain by my sire, who is among the missing, and attached to the coterie to find them. Uh, during this process, we stumbled upon a warehouse in Old Town uh, after it was recommended that we check it out by uh, Mr. Crowley. Upon investigation, we discovered a blood fountain, which we promptly destroyed. You, you trust it? You trust it, fucking Crowley? Mr. I'm Costa sorry. was I'm sorry. making efforts to renew ties with Clan Tremier, Mr. Keats. Mm. Thank you. As I was saying, the blood fountain was destroyed. There was a fight. We escaped. Um, the other people there were, were not there when we returned the following night. Shortly after that night, uh, myself and Soraka, a fellow member of my clan, were bidden to a meeting by our primogen, one Walter Quince. It was at this meeting uh, that I found the sheriff, uh, several members of Clan Bruja, uh, again, Walter, myself, Soraka, and uh, what I didn't know at the time, the elder Sabat, Mr. Talion. 
Aaron. It was at this meeting that a Valdery was performed, though I did not know it at the time. Fortunately, I was smart enough to not drink. However, I would like to detect lies on that. Uh, please roll. Mm, that one's cocked. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, five. He is being absolutely honest. Very good. Unfortunately, Soraka was not as wise in this instance. Um, the other members of the coterie were listening in on this event, as uh, I believe some of them can confirm for you. Uh, however, after the event, uh, unfortunately, that was the events of the farm that I know you are well aware of. Um, Miss yes. Soraka's state was definitely relevant to those events, unfortunately. Uh, but moving along, I don't want to salt old wounds. However, uh, sometime after that, Miss Soraka was taken, um, according to Mr. White, who was present uh, when that happened as a lookout. Uh, it appears to be our friends at the SI who had taken her. Several moment, nights had passed. The door opens with Virginia and Sam joining the rest of the coterie back in the boardroom. Hey, hate to break up this meeting. Um, I might have made problems. The good More news. Problems? The good it news. Sounds like this. I'm going to present that point. first. Sam's um, holding his face palming. Sam face palming. That the police department doesn't have Jonathan Keats' information. Isn't that great news, everybody? That is fantastic news. The less great news is um, I might have accidentally name dropped a certain um, bruja in the room, and we might need to go and either wipe the memory of this. What? Gentlemen, yeah, or kill him. Yeah, she, yeah, she dropped that. I, she had jumped. Yeah, I yeah. tried to remediate the situation. However, I do not necessarily trust that my remediation might have worked. So I think this is a situation we might oh. need to tend to now before we make more <clears throat> fires. I am being <clears throat> upfront and honest. Please it's don't kill me. Everyone in the fucking vehicles now. Okie dokie. I'm, I'm following. Not I'm following. I'm still face falling, but yeah, I'm following. Sam I'm going to give the major my cell phone. Relentlessly following the crowd. Um, um see Major, Jonathan. I do not think I need to have this phone. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> my bad. I will with two fingers take the phone and look at it like it's some sort of small insect that I'm just not pleased with looking at these cursed things. You know, I'm thinking I'm much too old to be hang or toying around with technology. Um, my mouth is stays shut. <laughs> I don't want to cause any trouble. I just want to get this done and over with and fix this mess. That is all. I mean, I could have called him to arrange a meeting. Oh, and then we could have chatted with unless him. Unless you have the ability to to transmit your oh, lure. I am pretty sure I could bring him running pretty damn quick. You will from now on take quick. all meetings in person. Of course. This this sounds a lot better. I didn't think that through very well, I don't think. So, and where's your hand? <laughs> Miss Stone? <sighs> Mr. Toon, you did need a new identity anyways, and I am deeply sorry, and I well, will I pay whatever it takes to help now. fix this. Huh? Yes, and I will pay whatever it takes to fix it. So you know what you must do at the start of every night now, Mr. Toon. Shave your head, shave your beard, and start wearing different clothes. Start walking with a different gait, and yep. start changing your height. Hmm. Now, you have the ability to get in touch with this individual that you called. Sam, your beast pokes up in the back of your head. There's this 
maniacal. <laughs> She's getting it. It's coming around like it should. That's what she gets. So I whisper quietly so no one can hear. Are you happy now? Do you feel satisfied? Not even close. No. But is it a start? Oh, yes. We're going to help this along, aren't we? When I say nothing else, but no one else heard this conversation between Sam and his bees. That was all whispered. And as she had heightened senses, no one heard that convers that one side of conversation. Nobody. I would like to know. No, <laughs> no nobody's <laughs> paying attention to you right now. It's yeah, I'm concerned with the fire. All, I just all built, eyes so. are on Virginia. Yeah, you kind of that doesn't fire a little bit bigger tonight, Miss Stone. At least I'm fixing the problem. I acknowledge there's an issue. I am here to fix. <laughs> well, when I try, I fixed the problem. You didn't want to answer your phone. Uh, You're I'm, I'm, all I'm, I'm leading everyone to the vehicles, fools. and I'm telling Virginia yeah. to have the chief meet her in a place that is neutral territory, not domain it, of anyone. And it doesn't quite remote. work that way, Major. We should go to the location, and I will. Very well. We will go to a place that is remote, not in anyone's territory, Virginia. not with any lupines around. Yes. What's an awareness? Okay. Who's looking here? Oh shit, that was three dice and five. That is um, four successes. Uh, you know exactly where Chief Thompson lives. Oh good. We could pay a house call. Do let's do that, yes. Uh, then we shall. Than doing, than doing that other plan. A player that's you to get my message, right? Uh what message is that, sir? I message you in Zoom. Direct message in Zoom. Oh good lord. Um a There's moment. a long chat. A mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I I got that one. Yeah, yeah. She just she just sent that to the okay. players. She's so yeah. Yeah, I don't know yeah, how much know. longer we're going though. But no, that's fine. I'm free tonight. So yeah. I'm free to fix Virginia's dumpster fire of a mess <laughs> right now. Hey, ah, at least I love you. All eyes turn from you. Sam to Virginia. Yeah. Like, we I love would. you, but you made it just a fire a little too big tonight. Fire, I would, I would so something funny. about stones and glass houses. <laughs> I would posit we've been playing for yes. about four hours now, and he's, the, about, and he's like he's about to fade out. I'm, I'm, uh, and this, uh, and this seems like a dramatically appropriate moment. This to, is an uh, appropriate <laughs> moment. Pause. <laughs> And uh, the major to ushers week. everyone out the front door, <laughs> barking orders at servants and of the house. Yeah, no, my 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 retinue is loading up. My whole retinue is loading up in SUVs right now. Oh, we're about to go deep. Let's go. Yeah. With something like this, we need to go deep or go home. Oh, we're rolling. Before deep. we break away, as people are exiting the house, I would like everyone to tell me where their brains are at oh um, um well flames white hot flames coming off the side of my face <laughs> <laughs> i love you i love you sammy but oh boy it was totally in character we've got we've got we've got some we we got i'm gonna take you to school <laughs> And teach you how Listen. to use presents. Mm. I, I was planning on doing it when we get there. Don't worry. Zeke, where are your brains at as this unfolds? The rapid succession I'm gonna let Mr. of I, I, I'm gonna words. Let Mr. White go first. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Annabelle. Uh, Zeke's head is a mixture of glee, <laughs> regret. Annoyance and a I told you so type demeanor of, well, you know, I could have been the one stirring fires tonight, and this dumpster I'm living in is getting cold, and I'm enjoying this. Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle may not be showing it, but Annabelle is absolutely livid right now. She's tired of all the bullshit, the loose lips, the dumb moves, not thinking things through. 
she's thinking about maybe it's time to pay a visit to somebody important and ask to be brought taken out of this fucking domain because she is sick of it. She's sick of people being stupid, especially after they have been told to be smart. Yeah. Um, that, that, oh, go ahead, John. That, that would be my um, conclusion. Like all of that I've said, like as soon as I notice like something's off, I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> like I don't have the, the presence or the, the gravitas of Annabelle to like be like, take me out of this domain, but I feel it in my soul. Sure. Yeah. Tim didn't want to be here in the, the first fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. The immortal world. Tim got dragged back here weeks ago and has been trying to get out ever since. <laughs> In the immortal words of the Buddha, you are where you are supposed to be. All right. Sam? Um, he's contemplating okay. uh, his new look. <laughs> Sam? Uh, there's a lot that's going through his head right now. How's the I told you so factor in Sam's brain? The beast is starting to get happy about the fact that Jiggy is messing up instead of him for a change. The rest of the corner, but it's also his mindset is it's like, why in the hell we can't do things without making it worse? It's like, oh my God, we all keep messing up, me included, not leaving myself out of that situation, including me. Why can't we do anything about messing up? The major is living. He's getting, he's going to get livid. And by the point we keep messing up, the point where he's going to go off on everybody, you won't get another beating again. again. Virginia, where's your major. brain at? So, it was kind of that realization as soon as she hung up, she was like, well, fuck. I'm going to go tell on myself so we can get this shit taken care of because, oh, fuck. It was literally like, She's like, all right, now that that's done, let's run while this is still hot and go put out this fire. So she would have been running down the hall. She like, says put out this fire as up. she's carrying two cans of gasoline. It's not um, a fire yet. There's just smoke. Put the gasoline <laughs> down. It, 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 it's, exactly it's a little blade. Digging. So <laughs> the, scene, here. the scene wraps with this. The major's barking orders as he's heading towards the front of the estate there is an ant hill kicked like activity as previously unseen and unknown security personnel begin to come out of the woodworks the likes of which have never been seen at the estate several suvs pull up front as the coterie members shuffle out the front and we fade to black. You guys Let us not have a dumpster fire tonight, guys. That yes, was freaking could. awesome. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Have. You could have went on one, one day for a dumpster fire. One day. And and I like, to come back and have a dumpster fire. <laughs> all right. All right. Like, all, right, all, right, all, right <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Like we do Pump the breaks. Uh, at the end Moving of. Up. Every one of our sessions, we like to go around the table and get a high point, a low point, and a nomination for the bonus XP. And we also invite our viewing audience to give us our their feedback and who they think uh, is due the extra XP for the week. So please, viewing audience, uh, pipe in your thoughts and opinions and ideas as we go around the table, and we're going to start with Mr. Tim Toon this evening. A high, low, mm. and a nom, sir. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, my high was probably uh, some of the Sabat exhibition, uh, or exposition, I should say. Um, and, 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 you know, starting to, to tie up some of that part of the, the story thread. Um, I also very much enjoyed our musical scene earlier. Um, as far as the logos, obviously, uh, you know, giving my fucking name to the police, probably not the highlight of my <laughs> evening. She's not dropping dimes. She's dropping manhole covers. Okay. Right. <laughs> Listen, I have to, I have like, to like, 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 I'm compensating for the amount of dumpster fires everybody else has been building. So I was like, you know what? Oh, we don't need more. <laughs> 
It is not a competition. I am gone right. this entire time since I started with this group. <laughs> not making messes. I get one. <laughs> and you get chewed out for it by everybody in the room. Oh no, Good. there's only one person that's going I don't want to reward this dumpster fire. <laughs> Make it down here. <laughs> Dad, this listen. Right now. Listen, Linda. <laughs> so care Look, I hear you, buddy. Nomination. Oh, my nomination. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to give it to Sam Smith. I really liked the uh, the the entrance and the the mama didn't raise no bitch attitude, and then finding out. Oh, oh yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. To 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 be fair, you know, I've seen. <laughs> I've seen bigger, bigger, bigger ones than 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 he taken down more than a few, but more more pegs than he was taken down tonight with less words. Oh yeah, yeah. that's so, yeah, Sam. You know that's that's why MVP for sure. <sighs> Hi, low and arm, sir. Hi, we got some Sabat exposition finally dropped. Um, I got two lows. One. Nope. Me pretty much being a retainer for Virginia. And two, Tim getting his fucking name dropped. <laughs> clank, 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 clank. And my name and my nom goes to the major. Just 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 being there alone, he gets a nom for me. <laughs> his attitude says enough. His attitude is enough to get a nom. Just watching him soak all this in, right? Yeah. <laughs> going off he's, after that he's getting the penny nom home. right now. Like, we're the, sorry. We're sorry we put all rich, this in front of the you. The rich patina <laughs> of failure. <laughs> Listen, we're fucked up, so we'll bait you with noms. <laughs> Virginia, a high load of nom, please. I don't even know where to start. All right. So I guess a high... All of the role playing in this evening's session was on point. Y'all did great. I love playing with you guys. The uh, amount of organic interactions that come from all of us um, kind of jiving, that's really exciting. I'm really appreciating that. Um, the low, <laughs> I fucking slipped a name because I thought that they already knew, but I was apparently wrong. So I fucked up. <laughs> It's and fine. hopefully I can it's fix fine. this before it's yeah. too late. So well, that's well, the point. What did the kids do? They... <laughs> yeah. Virginia goes, Tim Toon! <laughs> it's a dance move now. Oh, my God. And you a nom, please. Dab? Ready, ready? Double dab. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to nom. Um, it's actually really difficult. I'm going to nom Sam. Major, you get a special mention, but Sam Smith, that was some fantastic anger and angst and just the right amount of stubborn defiance that uh, we have come to know and love from Sam Smith. It was very appreciated. You did a great job. And it's always hard when people, you know, like even, even in an RP, or RP setting, when you get shit on, right? It's always difficult. And you did such a great job with that. Well, so really I do something. It. Well, I do something on my comeback. My comeback returns to the game. <laughs> I do something big. And yeah. There you go. Zeke. So you, you get my nom. You are muted, sir. Yes. I'm good. Got it for us. Oh, sorry about yeah. that. Um, so high low nomination. High point. Great interactions between everybody. We all did a great job interacting. Especially Mr. Smith. That was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, low point. Not much to do, but expand. Again, not a bad thing, but not much to do, but expand. Sorry. Nomination. No, 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 no. It's fine. We need to get the story out there. Could we have gotten Sir out there faster? Hey, we never know. Won't know. Yeah, half of it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, nomination is going to actually go to Mr. Smith. 
that was fun. You brought me into your moment, and you kept me there. Secondary nomination to Mr. Delaney, because damn, you played good Ventura. Ventura, Ventura. Delaney, not Mr. I've earned this rank. You. <laughs> Mr. Keats. You made you Delaney. Yeah, um, awesome role play, everyone. Um, hi, but just being here, it was awesome. Um, the nom would be uh, Silvanov to give give all of your uh, your NPCs a, an experience to use against us. Um, no, uh, <laughs> noted. <laughs> oh yeah, noted. Oh, yeah. That's still done. Counts. <laughs> major counts. Major ST point. <laughs> major Delaney. Uh, you you got my nom. <laughs> it, it was good. It was compelling uh, the whole time. And uh, low would be uh, just. I don't have a low to. Mr. Delaney, you're muted. I also haven't said anything yet. Oh, <laughs> that too. Boy, there were some highs, <laughs> there were some lows. <laughs> It was the best of times. Hey, it was the worst of this times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> you know, uh, the the idea to the idea to uh, start the morning off with some amazing piano, or the morning, the evening, uh, off with some amazing piano was quite inspired. And then, and then the as as uh, Robert Plant would put it, uh, beautiful cacophony. <laughs> That ensued. Uh, that was delightful. Um, low, 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 low. Guys, I don't like being that guy. <laughs> you know, I don't. But you picked the character. I got bad news for you. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was, I You're was, that I guy. Was literally said, I was literally told, hey, I need a venture. And I'm like, I can play a venture. <laughs> and. <laughs> Don't don't try and freaking sh- don't try and piss on my head and tell me it's raining. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, I I I, I, I I I play I play it happily. I play it happily. Uh, we enjoy having you here. Um, oh God, uh, yeah. No, honestly, uh, another another high point for me is knowing what my intent is for Mr. Keats and Miss Ada, and looking forward to being able to 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 provide a bit of light in all the darkness uh is something that i am i am personally looking forward to i may shit i may have just spoiled it god damn it <laughs> look i'm new to this i'm new to the streaming thing so like i'm 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 not even looking at anything else i'm looking at my fellow players and it, it, yeah anyway uh low was me just spoiling that and manhole covers this, that's the name of this episode, Manhole Covers. Manhole Covers. <laughs> <laughs> manhole covers. <laughs> or, 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 clank, 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 clank. Yeah. Either one works. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just I just found tonight's audience rather lacking, so I figured <laughs> I would bring my performance <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> you know, uh, my nomination... Um, uh, let's see here. My nomination is going to be to go to Annabelle because for <laughs> her face. Well, you said that it's like really. Oh no, I, I because again, I learn new things about each of you each night, and so when I find out that she's not going to lay in the bed, no, no, she's going to find a cup. Uh, she's going to find a cupboard or a or a banister to lay in. In order to evade prying eyes, that is quite inspired and a delicious bit of character nuance. So, Annabelle. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Annabelle, high, low, and a nom, please. <sighs> well, let's see. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot. Uh, the high. <laughs> Getting to use my point of performance for probably the one and only time. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Annabelle, Next I, time think you leave I think your violin play was absolutely on point. 
Well, Miss Annabelle, <laughs> next really time you read the performance of me and Virginia, <laughs> and you can. I just... really tried to make it work. I uh, tried for I, you. I was kind of hoping I would like be shield fail because I was just imagining myself like crushing the violin, but that was not to be. Uh, let's I think see. It was hello. on point. It was great. Hello, hello, hello. Shoot. Hello is probably just the fact that even when some members of this table have been told don't shit the bed, they still shit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Kudos to Mr. White for not shitting the bed. I do appreciate it. My nom, suspicious. My my nom goes to Major Delaney for the unenviable task he has had um, draped across his shoulders, which is fixing our shit. I do feel so <laughs> so bad for him fixing your shit. <laughs> can I can I can I call him Mulligan? <laughs> Um, um how? <laughs> like no do over, do over. No, <laughs> no, no do overs. <laughs> um high low and on for me. Hi. I've got seven players in one night. Yay! Um, I told y'all I was coming back. You think I was gonna lie? No. A, a no. low for me was the floating eye teeth, eyeballs turning yellow. I apologize. I've been liberally drinking along this session and did not plan accordingly. I think we all have at this <laughs> point. If not, we should start. I drink my, tea. My <laughs> nom is going to go to Mr. Sam Smith for enduring the pain that's been coming for weeks. Um, oh, we're trying to avoid it for weeks. Even though you've we're dodged it for here. weeks, As you, I, did, I, I, you I, did stick I, in I, there. <laughs> You did it! Like, that shit had to get over with, and now it's going to be in my head. Like, See, that's, that's the beauty of it. In. Get it over Brent with. Free. And then move on. Well, you told that to my life. My life won't be over for a minute. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm back. I made a comeback, and guess what? I'm staying. So with so, the with the votes of our, our team and our viewing audience... Um, everybody's it, gonna it get says their, one for me and one for Virginia XP. because of the one for me, one for Virginia. According to Shanky, it's one for one for Virginia, one for me. The so. the overall vote is Mr. Sam Smith will get an XP and Miss Mr. Delaney will also get an extra XP as the two of you will split uh, the vote this week. Congratulations. That's fine. Um, our wonderful friends in the viewing audience, we thank you so much for joining us. We've enjoyed having you. We've enjoyed putting on the game and just going about our normal routine for our Saturday nights. Um, this is fun, I swear. <laughs> if, you, if you'd like to join... Uh, it didn't work. Oh, crap. No, it didn't work. But I, before you do that, there I do goes. have something I want to say. In the words of Chops, mental health is important. Check on your family members, check on your friends. Mm -hmm. Don't just assume that they're okay. Actually reach out and talk to them. And if you have mental health issues of your own, seek help. There's nothing wrong in seeking help. Absolutely. Our community is very aware that uh, during this COVID, <laughs> uh, and not just COVID, but in, in life in general, that we all have our stopping points and things that 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 test us and test our endurance and our courage um please stick around for our little psa at the end of our stream here we will be uh still live in on zoom chat in the discord the mcstabber uh prince william by night discord channel that we linked uh in the twitch chat here please feel free to join us after the PSA, uh, we've had a wonderful evening. I want to thank my players once again. You guys are awesome, and I love you all. And to our viewing audience, we love you, and we can't wait to see you all next Saturday. Um, we will see you on our Discord. We'll link the uh, Zoom chat where you can join us for some post-stream chat if you would so like to. Um, everyone, we bid you adieu and good night. I'll be just soon. Hello, I'm Nick Weird. You may know me as Chops. I'm here to remind you that your mental health is a very important thing. 
We all have problems. And sometimes it can be hard to share them because we don't want to burden other people. Or we're too afraid or ashamed of the things we've done to even try. But your friends and family are here for a reason. They'd much rather hear about what's happening in your life than ever hear that something terrible has happened to you. And if you feel like you can't talk to your friends or family, there's resources available for that too. Please reach out to them. There's no need to go through this alone. We all need help sometimes, and there's no reason to feel ashamed or feel afraid to ask for it, especially if you need it right now. If you or someone you know is in crisis, whether they are considering suicide or not, please call the toll-free lifeline at 800-273-TALK. Again, that is 800-273-8255 to speak with a trained crisis counselor 24-7. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline connects you with a crisis center in the Lifeline network that is closest to your location. Your call will be answered by a trained crisis worker who will listen empathetically and without judgment. The crisis worker will work to ensure that you feel safe and identify options and information about mental health services in your area. Your call is confidential and free. Unable or unsure about calling? Text NAMI, that is N-A-M-I, to 741-741 to connect with a trained crisis counselor to receive free 24-7 crisis support via text message. Again, text NAMI to 741-741. You are not alone. Trained expert advocates are available 24-7 to provide confidential support to anyone experiencing domestic violence or seeking resources and information. Help is available in Spanish and other languages. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 800-799-SAFE. Again, that is 800-799-7233. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, help is available. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 800 800- 656 HOPE. Again, that number is 800 656 4673. To connect with a trained staff member from a sexual assault service provider in your area that offers access to a range of free services. Disaster Distress Helpline. Call 1 800 985 5990 or text talk with us to 66746 the disaster distress helpline provides immediate crisis counseling for people who are experiencing emotional distress related to any natural or human caused disaster the helpline is free multilingual confidential and available 24 hours a day 7 days a week Call 1-800-985-5990 or text TALK WITH US to 66746. Again, the number is 1-800-985-5990 or text TALK WITH US to 66746.